one. Hey, kids, this is Ivan. How the hell are you? Well, gee, the family friendly is totally ruined already. But anyhow, we're going to play some uh, we're going to play some Uncharted Worlds and pick up where we left off in Big Trouble in Alpha Centauri. Yeah, exactly. So we're going we're to use some Discord and see how this works. Apparently, this works a little bit better, even though I'm, I'm a Luddite and I've got my laptop stacked up on books at the moment, you know. So just I'm going to do a real brief recap and then we'll just jump right into it. So we, we have well, with us, we have uh, Captain Tiberius Gray. And we have uh, we have Johanno. Uh, I'm looking for his last name. And I'm not Seminoff. Seminoff, that's right. The, the ship's bosun, the the uh, the uh, refugee from the EKA, former EKA soldier, now turned mercenary and uh, I don't know, soldier of fortune, but just out to make some money. And then, then we have a uh, yeah, Vitor Leichen. 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 Ah, yes. Intense, guarded, and grimy. He is a mechanic, <laughs> and a himself kind of a refugee from the Elsor Mech Tech, and really desirous of getting this damn chip out of his head. Mm. Wants his freedom. And uh, so they're they're aboard their their uh, ship, uh, a ship that uh, actually is owned by the uh, transgalactic colonial shipping and uh, salvage. They decide they're going to make some real fast money. They're going to do this real, you know, fast job, easy job off the grid. They go down to Alpha Centauri. They're going to do a job for the rabbit. Or what is what is the rabbit also called, Eloy? Uh, La Blanca, La Blanca Cuniclo. La Blanca yeah. Cuniclo. There you go. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so we're going to do a quick job. Just bring some something over uh, to this, this place for me. Well, it turns out to be incredibly illegal guns and a whole bunch of them. And it's going to be bringing them to Terraforming Colony 69J92F. And it uh, should be an easy job, except they get chased from the rabbit's place by somebody. Who knows who? Um, have a high-speed pursuit. They finally lose these guys. You know, managed to kill most of them on the way back there. And then they, you know, are going to just have these things loaded onto the ship. They're going to go. It'll be easy. Except they get uh, accosted. Not really accosted, but an inspector from the Transgalactic Shipping and Salvage Company come and just, got, you know, they want to review the manifest and everything. But this is not good because they're carrying stuff they shouldn't be. So the guy accidentally dies. Accidentally. And now it's time for them to leave. <laughs> <laughs> There's all kind of hell breaking loose the spaceport. They manage to get up into orbit. Um, they see uh, members of uh, another faction, a rather rather like bizarre uh, faction, the Lingua Hydra Syndicate, are in orbit. And these people are just kind of strange. You, you don't mess with them um, because they're just kind of weird and scary. They're they're uh, as far as people know, they're kind of like symbionts. They're humans, but they they encounter another race somewhere out there. So they are just bizarre. Um, but that's not the real problem. The real problem is they're being hailed and tracked down by by, uh, by ships from the uh, transgalactic shipping and salvage. So they do the only thing they could possibly think of was to do a wild jump out of there, <laughs> which causes a lot of sickness and vomiting, and the crew is not really happy. But they end up at the last way station. The crew has to, you know, they have to placate the crew with a 72-hour shore leave and, uh, you know, a raise. But during this time, you know, our, our crew has kind of like a, uh, I guess we'd call it a, uh, they do some soul searching. What are we really doing out here? What's going on? There's got to be something better than this. You know, Captain, Captain Tiberius Gray contacts his sister saying, can I get back in with the family? And his evil sister, Liliana, says, no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know, I'd rather not have you come back because I'm really enjoying running the family. In the meantime, Vitor he just contacts somebody in the EKA, this mysterious man called Silo, because he wants to ship out of his head. Silo's agreeing to do that, but once Vitor clues him in that there's all these guns on the ship, which Vitor thought were going to the EKA, he figured, who, who else could possibly be buying all these guns? Silo's eyes get, like, as wide as saucers and, like, dude, I want those guns. Where are you? Vitor manages to convince him to, to, to get this thing out of his head, they figure, well, this is going to be our way out. We'll make some money. We'll be free. All we need is another ship. So they're talking. How can we get another ship? And the doctor, Edison Wheeler, well, the doctor kind of jumps the gun because the doctor's like that. And because somebody rolled a weak, a weak hit. <laughs> so there's a complication. <laughs> and in game terms, kids, that's what happened. So 
he decides he's going to start taking this other cruiser or you know um, uh, a freighter right near them. It looks a lot better than their piece of junk derelict. So at that point, they uh, they they take off because once again they're being pursued not only by some runabouts, some some some, some uh, station security they presume, mm -hmm. but also. Uh, the uh, Vitor starts to heal that, that familiar little buzzing in his head. The Elsar Mechtech, where, where other members of the guild are in the area trying to make contact with him. And that, you know, is just like the kiss of death because he's split already. And he does not want them inside his head to figure out what he's been up to. Correct. So they do the only thing you could possibly think of doing is a wild jump. I guess it's what we do. It's our new, <laughs> don't know what to do, wild jump. Is right. that what this is called? Oh, no, it's Uncharted Worlds. I thought it was Wild Jump. Right, Wild right. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> so you do a Wild Jump, and, 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 the, and the last thing I believe, our captain, in his haste, rolled a seven, which is not bad. The ship did not blow apart or, you know, nothing too bad happened. But there's a complication. In fact, I don't believe our captain even said where he was Wild Jumping to, just any place as long as it ain't here. Yep. <laughs> so you feel that kind of sickening... Uh, descent into nothingness. And the space just kind of like liquefies your, around you, and you're not really sure if your stomach's on the inside of your body or the outside of your body. And you feel heavy and light all at the same time, like you're completely you know, at one with the entire universe and being squished between two animals. You know, it's a lovely feeling, the wild jump. You know, outside of an established um, lane. What you come to. You know, finally, finally space like kind of takes form around you. The stars stop swirling around like, like vomit. Although several of the crew are just retching and puking, you know, this time they're, they don't appear to be quite so mad. They knew, you know, they were, they were on the run. You guys did the right thing. So you're not getting that, you know, people, people are groaning and, and bemoaning the fact that they're still alive, that sort of thing, checking themselves. You know, you see chainsaw down on the floor, just checking his head, you know, making sure he's got all his appendages and everything, you know, Dimitri is next to him retching. The doctor seems to be almost completely unfazed. You know, just w wanders off like, oh, man, what a rush. Ugh. You know, and smashes right into a bulkhead. <laughs> you know, just completely disoriented. You're not really sure where you are. I look at the captain and I say, ¿Quién estás, Capitano? Where are we? And I think I'm, like, spinning a little bit back and forth in my captain's chair not realizing that we're not like in this, you know, wild jump movement anymore. So it's sort of like when you're on a ship and you, you know, you get onto land and you still do that for a little bit. Um, and then I kind of like stop for a minute and I, I punch in uh, coordinates on the computer just to try to get a sense of where we are. Um, and would I be able to find that out or ascertain that? Uh, I would say like, let's do an, let's do an assessment um, and, and use your, uh, use your expertise. Alrighty. At this point, you're really trying to just determine where the hell you are. Well, I got a big old five. Okay. Well, you're really just having trouble, like really getting your coordinates. The the, the ship, um, the ship's computers are like seem to be a little damaged. You're getting like these things flashing in and out, um, and you're just you know you're not you know you're not familiar with these particular areas. Like you're, the star charts aren't really lining up. You're just not sure where the heck you are at this point. Yeah, so I look over to Johanno, and I just simply... I don't even know. And then proceed to puke over the side of the chair. Right. Uh, Marco, uh, check the ship. Uh, take a, take Dimitri here and see what, uh, what we have to work with. Do we have weapons? We'll, What's going on? Get the feel for the for the ship. Where yeah. is La Ingeniero? Where is La Ingeniero? Vitor, where are you at? Uh, Vitor is uh, uh, he would have been back hiding among the crates. Okay. Uh, with his uh, trying to manufacture uh, and make sure this foil uh, foil hat uh, is or, or at least uh, engineered a hat to protect himself from the signals. Um, uh, I might pick, poke my head up over the top once the hat is affixed and look about the cargo area. Uh, uh, 
not quite as affected by the wild jump as you might think, because I had been uh, I had been uh, drunk earlier, <laughs> right? So I wouldn't probably have noticed the difference. <laughs> um, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, where is Cooper? And I have to find a uh, I have to find a uh, a laboratory or a uh, workspace on this ship. <clears throat> I I cannot not have my workspace, so I might start looking about the ship. Yeah, you actually find Cooper. Um, mm -hmm. Cooper kind of kind of uh, stumbles into. He's like, "Oh God, what is what? Is, what's happened? What has he gotten us into this time?" Oh my God, what I cannot believe! If I just had not slept with that man's wife, I would not have to be watching this idiot. That's, that's more than I need to know, Cooper. Oh, <clears throat> what have you found on the ship? It's actually actually a pretty nice ship. That's the one thing I'll say about this. It's got a really bizarre name. The the Valkyrie Scourge. I'm not really sure what the hell that even is supposed to mean. I'm not even sure what the hell a Valkyrie is, but it's uh, actually pretty nice. I think whoever owned this was kind of well off. It's definitely a lot better than the piece of crap we were on, I tell you that. Good. Uh, I, I will make my way up um, to the bridge if I can find that and uh, tell Cooper later we, we dice. Play dice. Mm. Oh yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, the, the layout of the ship as you start to wander around, it's it's a standard freighter. It's just definitely a nicer class. Okay. So it's nothing that like you know once you get your bearings and figure out where you are, you're like oh yeah, the, the bridge should be here. You're able to find like a, a, a the laboratory section, a section that you would would have would have been analogous to your old lab there, and it's it's just well stocked. Perfect. It doesn't look doesn't look a lot. It doesn't look like it was used an awful lot. Um, you know, guy probably hired somebody to, to, to kind of like maintain and run his ship. And the guy is probably out there on, on last way, like at a roulette table or in some brothel at this particular point, not realizing that his digs are gone. And you wonder like, yeah. well, will he, will he like yours? <laughs> he's going to be the guy that comes out of the club and looks for his car and he can't find it. And then he's like, what the, yeah. Um, yeah. I think while, while Viator would be kind of making his way around the ship, I would be trying to run diagnostics just to figure out like, okay, can I access the computer system without trouble? Can I find out what systems are drawing power? Does this thing have weapons? You know, that whole thing. Um, okay. Well, yeah, give me, give me a, uh, give me an interface. Oh gosh. I need new dice for, uh, interface. No, uh, three. Interface three. The terminal that you're at, like just a shower of sparks, like just comes up. Like you know, you're not sure if you, you damage something in the wild jump, but like it's you know, at that particular point, there's a shower of sparks and there's like a panel right over over you, and like it just lets go. <laughs> one oh of those gosh. cables just like falls out. You know, I hate to use a simile, but it's like almost like one of those old Star Trek where the things, yeah. the snakes yeah. are. Just <laughs> yeah, and I think I would jump out of the way, and then I would yell for. Um, I'd be like, Vitor, Vitor, where are you? And then. You get all kind of queasy again for a minute, and then I'm, what is it with these broken ships? And I look to Johanna, and I'm like, I don't know where we are, but let's keep an eye out. And I, you know, the viewport or whatever. Uh, I'll try to turn on sensors and see if anything's, you know, hailing us. But oof, I don't know. We got to figure I, out a way out of I here. I grab up my uh, my engineering kit and my uh, my wrench. And I start heading for uh, for the yelling of Tiberius <laughs> toward the front of the uh, bridge, uh, trying to say, reconnoiter everything as I pass through there. Okay, there's the barracks, you know. There is the doctor's quarters. Uh, I won't I won't make eye contact with the doctor at all, and I will uh, come as as soon as I can into the bridge. I say, uh, Capitano, uh, I'll go find the. Uh, line Janeiro to fix this and uh i think i'll take some men and do a sweep of the ship we don't want any surprises we took this pretty fast we might have stowaways uh and that's going to be something to deal with i'll okay. be back uh i hope the intercom's still working maybe we can keep in touch i'll find the uh, line Janeiro. send him here <clears throat> and i take off with uh chainsaw i think it's left. <laughs> nice. um uh, when my weapons at the ready, and I'm going to go back and start a room by room sweep of the ship. That'll help me familiarize myself with it. Uh, run into Vitor and send him to fix this and uh, check for surprises. Right on. 
That's cool. So why don't you like as you, as you're like doing this 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 um sweep this sweep of the entire ship? Why don't you why don't you roll me a a medal? You know for for being stealthy mm. and 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 uh... sure sure. Uh, here we go. I got uh, plus one, and that would be a oh shoot a six. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a seven, and no, it's a six. <laughs> okay. Well, you you and Shane are definitely stealthy. You know, as you're as you're as you're, as you're, as, you're so. <laughs> as you're checking the ship, like I mean, you, you're able to you know you find the cargo hold, um, you know where the guys you know obviously uh, moved all the stuff you know via one of the airlocks before they really got detected. So it you know it's a nicer cargo hold you know cargo hold two where they they've got you know you see the crepes is kind of like all over the place um, over there. It doesn't look like this guy had very much cargo on his ship at the time. Mm -hmm. It looks like he unloaded a whole bunch of it, so you're not finding anything, you know, particularly um, it doesn't look like particularly valuable. You get to one mm -hmm. one area where it, it's more close. You start, you know, you start opening up things and it's, and it's a bunch of bunch of uh, bunch of women's clothes, men's clothes, that sort of thing. It looks looks like it actually might be kind of valuable. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, there's a few, there's a few state rooms, that sort of thing. There is no private shuttle, you know, uh, which is just a damn shame. Seeing as you know, the, you know, you know, the captain will probably be uh, disappointed that, the, that there's not a private shuttle in this particular ship. But what the heck? You stole an entire freighter. Why couldn't you steal a private shuttle? Some other time. That's right. That's a good point. That's right. <laughs> but um, you do, um, you finally get to to one room. You know, you 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 know, hit the hit the panel, you know, opens up, and there's a woman inside. You know, in the bed, and she's like she's like in the bed, and she's got like a pistol. She's point, I was pointing right at you. Oh. So, uh, Vitor, you've made your way up to the bridge. <clears throat> Tiberius, what what do you need? And I would just sort of point up above me so you could see, like, the panel and whatever. And I'm like, this computer system is not working. Something's going on. It's starting to feel like our old ship. I got it. I got it. <clears throat> well, it's because you, you push the red button. That's that's exactly the problem. But, but so uh, I, I'm going to go over and try to patch up this computer terminal. <laughs> and All I'd right. be, like, watching over your shoulder. And I think I would say, I thought you told me to push the red button last time. No, that's in the old ship. Not an afraid of like this. Not an afraid of like this. You do not push the red button. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Thank you. I won't push the red button next time. And then I'm Can I'm proceeding find... to look for a red button. <laughs> yeah. And they're just sparks flying all over the place. Um, and so you're actually you're actually trying to to patch this up. Yeah. Fix it up. Okay. Yeah. Really, really, really a patch up. A little little plus expertise or all. Expertise plus two. Here we go. Oh, eight plus two, ten. Yes. All right. This is going to take you a while. Jam it up there and start using uh, the great equalizer wrench to get it tightened down <laughs> right there. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, at some point, I'll look over my shoulder and say, Captain, you, you, I can handle this. You don't need to watch. And I'll go back to work. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And if you, once you're done with that, if, if you can, if you know which buttons to push on this computer, please just go ahead and try to find out where we are. Sensor scans or something. And, uh, and then I would proceed. So, oh, go ahead. Let me get this straight. You don't know where we're at. Not a clue. But it, the computer wouldn't, it wouldn't do a scan. I couldn't, you know. You know, that might be a good thing. If we don't know where we're at, what are the odds that anyone else knows where we're at? <laughs> I kind of like, I kind of like being lost. It's a good place for a guy with my troubles. I agree to a point, but we also don't know how many provisions we have on this ship. And if we're lost, that could be a problem. We should probably find out where we are. All right. Yeah. When I get this fixed, I'll see if I can uh, uh, figure out where we're at. Excellent. And then I think I would I would proceed around the, the bridge, kind of just going on a tour of the ship at this point. Just to see what, yeah, see what's up. So, so yeah, it's easy for you to kind of just take a little little circuit of, of the of the ship. Um, it, it does like you know conform to like normal normal freighter uh, 
um, standards. Like you just, you start to get your bearings too. You've been on some nicer ships than the one you've had. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of interesting because, you know, as you, as you, you come upon Johanna and Shane saw standing outside of a, a, a stage room, looking a little bemused. <laughs> and I think I would see Johanna and I would say, Hey, my friend, what's going on? I'll raise my hand and I say, easy, Zami Dan. Uh, you're a bit of a tight spot. No need for that gun. Let's talk it out. Like, who are you? Where's Max? Uh, there has been a change of plans. We're in change space. of plans? Yes. Uh, the situation has changed for you. Uh, we are no longer in last way. We just came out of a wild jump in case you didn't notice. Oh, ship I noticed under, that. <clears throat> ship is under new management. Johano, Johano, who are you talking to? What's going on? Say, <laughs> the new Capitano is here. He wants to talk to you, but you need to put the gun away. So I'm trying to keep him back so he doesn't, you know, get, find a fire. Right. <laughs> Right, I got you. Let's see. Uh, give me, give me, give me an influence roll with this because she just does not look happy. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yes, that's uh, ten, and I think I got like a in one modifier, eleven. All right. Yes. Okay. Well, she she looks. She's looking at you. She looks at Chainsaw. She can see the captain. You know, and you know. She, Looks down at the gun, and it's it's not quite as small as the captain's gun. Mm-hmm. But you can see the gears are you know wheels in her head turning, and maybe maybe she's just maybe she's just thinking I can't take all of them. Maybe she's thinking that you know she, you know, what the heck? But she she kind of reluctantly starts to put the gun down, yeah. and finally just puts it down you know on the bed next to her. Yeah. So I'll start walking in real slow. Capitano is here. Stuck it out. No need for violence. And I'll reach for the gun. Secure it. Yeah, she just kind of sighs. She just lets her shoulders drop a little bit. Yeah, so very, very. Uh, you know, it's she's kind of a kind of a youngish. You know, probably late twenties. You know, very mm-hmm. athletic looking. Uh, from that girl, looks looks like she could kick a little butt. Uh, very pretty. But still, kind of like regarding you with these really hard eyes. But just kind of sighs a little bit as you take the gun. And, and at that so, point, I would uh, say, Johanno, what's going on? Uh, come in, Capitano. We seem to have a unexpected passenger. Perhaps you should talk to her. Her? Ah, very good. And I would enter the room. The dashing Captain Tiberius Gray. Damn right. Please describe this. <laughs> so... I would walk in to the room and I would imagine that as much with as much grace as I could, I would try to kind of shoulder past Johanno and chainsaw in this like small room where there's really not enough, you know, room for four people and see this woman lying on the bed. And I'm a gentleman of a certain age and it may have been a while since I've been in, in, uh, the company of a female who I liked or who was not a, a you know, a cold hearted shrew. Um, and I say, I hold out my hand and I say, good evening, madam. I am captain Tiberius gray. Oh, roll me influence. <laughs> gray Tiberius gray. I'm good at influence. Uh, 11. Really? Wow. Couple lucky rolls for you guys. So that this this hard, hard looking, stunning woman kind of like takes your hand, shakes it, gives you a firm grip. Said Beatrice. So what happened to Max? How did you get the ship? Uh, what is she? Uh, obvious question. Is she dressed? Oh, she's dressed. Okay. She's dressed. All right. Excellent. Um, then I would say, well met, Beatrice. Uh, Max. I don't I don't know a Max. I think 
This might be an explanation that would be better uh, given over drinks. Is there a galley on this ship? You really haven't been here long, have you? No. Are you sure you're a captain? I am a captain indeed. Oh, she said, you stole the ship. And she just walks right past you, pushes past Johanna and Chainsaw. And and starts starts walking down down the hall. Follow me. Very good. And uh, I would go next, and then I would you know motion to Johanna and Jane's how to come with me. Yeah. Yeah. And you know she's you could you're, you're following around. You could just hear her. it's like the audacity. I can't believe it. My luck has gone from bad to worse. <laughs> and I think as yeah. uh, as we're walking, I, I would step back to Johanna, and I would say. If um, if there's alcohol involved, let's not tell Viator about this. <laughs> yes, yeah, Capitano. Right. I think La Ingeniero doesn't go well with drinks. <laughs> yeah, I fear he he goes too well with drinks. Mm. Yeah. And she slips. She slips into a, to a, a door. And what you hear, if, you know, because she's a good good distance in front of you. She's walking with a, a real a real gait. Um, it's a woman that, like you tell, she's very confident, very sure of herself. The door, you can hear the door slide, you know, she goes. Then the next thing you hear is a very familiar voice going, whoa, baby, hey, welcome. I'm the, and you're, you're a slap. <laughs> Get your hands off me. Oh, my goodness. You and, and you know she's probably, she's probably just met Wheeler. Exactly. And, and Wheeler, must have, Wheeler must have found the galley. So time on the bridge. Yeah, who who's keeping oh. an eye on Wheeler? That's our new. <laughs> yeah. uh, Viator <laughs> is sitting in the captain's chair. Uh, he's 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 taking care of any potential fire hazard. But uh, once that was done and the captain left, he 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 sat down in the captain's chair. I might be looking at some of the instruments. I'm looking for any of the monitors that uh, security monitors that might be on the ship. Uh, and if there are, then I would maybe toggle in on the captain's quarters, toggle in on the our cargo, maybe toggle in and see uh, uh, the soundless uh, presentation of what's going on. Oh, you've got that. You've got that all up. And sitting right. sitting next to so you. So I'm watching them talk to this girl, and I'm watching her lead them out. And then I'm over to the galley, and I'm seeing the doctor getting smacked around. And then uh, I decide uh, I decide I've seen enough, and I'll shut those off. <laughs> yeah. and then i think i better probably see where we're at yeah and you, you smell you smell something pungent and delicious uh, and you realize you realize behind you uh is walking is cooper and cooper has a couple cigars lit oh yeah and, and he hands just, her a cigar I just which is this knowing it's just yeah so much better so much better than those 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 filthy rich person cigarettes that uh, tiberius was you know that you took from tiberius the last time Cooper, these are the real thing. You can and you know he's them. stolen. You know he's stolen these from from Tiberius's private stash of, of Cuban cigars. Right. <laughs> you can you can read my mind, Cooper. Cooper, what do you think about this? Our 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 uh, our, our bold and noble dashing captain and his grunt have found some stowaway. You want to see? I'll I'll turn, I'll turn the man monitors back on to the uh, to the galley. Right there. You see that? She's gonna be trouble. Oh yeah, she's beautiful. She is gonna be trouble. Gonna be trouble. Gonna be trouble. All right, let me. Uh, is, wait, is does Wheeler? Wheeler have a fat lip? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Was oh, he bleeding? Uh, yeah, but, but I, I think she went easy on him. I think she went easy on him. You should have seen it though. It felt good. It felt good. Uh, Cooper, you know how to look stuff up on these computers? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that should be easy. Yeah, come on, over. have a seat. Take a look at this. Uh, Captain's wanting to know where we're at. Don't hit the red button, and then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna exit and head back for my my manufacturing uh, my laboratory. Right on. And you see, like Cooper Cooper's just sitting there, he's like, kind of cracking his fingers and, and starting to like mess around with the computer. You see, like stuff. Don't hit to come the up. red button. I won't. I won't. And you know, Cooper's already like using like something something you know like a plate or you know something as an ashtray, something that probably really shouldn't be used as an ashtray. The radar, yes. the radar. Yeah. Radar. 
So situation normal when the when the when the cats away, the mice will play. So pretty awesome. At this particular point. So yeah, there you are in the kitchen, guys. You know. And uh, so she she just smacked um, Wheeler, which makes me very happy. Yeah. And Wheeler's already getting himself some ice and putting it on his face. Yeah. What uh, a woman. Ugh. Yes, indeed. I like her more and more. And I would look to her and I say, "So, Beatrice, is there any uh, anything to drink on this ship? You seem to know it." Oh, there is. There is. She points you to a cabinet, and you know it's it's well appointed with all sorts of fancy liqueurs and brandies and whiskeys, and and you realize, boy, you probably took somebody really important ship. Yeah, this is my kind of ship. Um, and I say, so. I'm a bit of at a bit of a disadvantage here. I uh, I don't know this Max that you're speaking of. Can you can you maybe enlighten me? And I, I'll start pouring drinks, you know, for myself and for her and Johanno, and then I'll I'll kind of offer up an empty glass to to uh, Chainsaw just to see if he wants one. Um, oh yeah, Ch- yeah, Chainsaw Chainsaw grabs a glass. Yeah, I would pour him one as well, and then uh, we would all start, I think, drinking that. Yeah, Chainsaw was one of the guys that was missing for a while at the uh, at last day. You know, <laughs> as you rounded the men back up. Gotcha. So she's like, yeah, uh, this ship belongs to Max, Max Zemer. And uh, give me a, uh, let's see, let's see if there's a role for you to actually be able to figure this stuff out or not. Um, hmm. Probably, you know what, just give me a pretty little straight 2d6 roll. All right, uh, I got a five. And Johanna, what do you, what do you got? Uh, I got a seven. <laughs> okay. Um, Max, yeah, Z, Max, Max Zimmer is not coming up on your radar at all, Captain. Um, Johanna, you you seem to th- remember this guy is some kind of uh, um, like John Gotti type, a little bit of a gangster. Mm-hmm. You know, but like more of a playboy gangster. You know, not you know, what it, what what he really does on the underside. You're not really sure, but just kind of like a high profile uh, wheeler and dealer. And you know, as she's talking to you, like you know, she, you know, she's like, you guys are in a bit of trouble. You know, sooner or later he's going to find you. He's going to want the ship back. And he's going to want me back. Capitano, this Zemer, he's connected. The uh, name seems familiar. I can't quite place it, but uh, I know he's connected. So we may have stolen uh, some rather uh, dangerous ship. You, you mean Wheeler stole a rather dangerous ship, I, I think, yeah. Uh, and I would glare at Wheeler, and then I would say... It was your plan. I didn't think of this. I just... That's what we were, we were going to do. And uh, I think I would punch him. Just, you know, I mean, reading, <laughs> you know, doing the same thing that, that you know, seems to be happening in here. I would just, bam, right in the face. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah um, you, you're shocked. Like, he was just at that point where he just wasn't expecting that coming. He's, you know, he's got, like, a, you know, he's got the ice in his face. And he's, got, he's got, like, a drink in his hand. He's, you know, just kind of mouth up. And you just pop him. He's like, oh, what yeah. the? I'd be like, Next time you run plans by me, I'm the captain. And then I look back to Beatrice and I say, "All right, so it sounds like this Max guy is going to be a problem. Well, we got a solar system full of problems. So what's one more to the list? Now, does he have any way to track this ship? She's like, well, I'm sure there's a couple transponders on it someplace. I wouldn't know where to find them, but all right." Fine. And and who are you to him? Uh, I'm his secretary. <laughs> his his secretary. Okay. Secretary, bodyguard. Bodyguard. Okay. Not exactly. Okay. Not exactly girlfriend, but. Right. He has people in his employ, and once you start working for Max, you don't stop working for him. Well, let me ask you this: Do you want to stop working for him? Sure, if I could, but I don't know if I, you know, like I said, he's probably going to find you, 
He's going to want to ship back. He's going to want me back. And because you took something from him, he's probably just going to want it back no matter what. It's probably not really about the ship or me. No, I, I understand. I know people have, like that. Have you ever been in trouble before? Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> yeah, you look like a man's been in trouble before. And she looks at Johanna. And then she looks at Chainsaw. Better tell him to go easy on that. He's going to not fall over in a minute. You realize, like, Chainsaw is, like, on, a, on his yeah, second big glass of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, Chainsaw, uh, stop that. We should get back to checking the ship. Transponders, we need to find them. We need to get rid of them. A transponder? <laughs> I'll find it, man. Chainsaw. Chainsaw. Chainsaw, wait, wait. Go tell Vitor. Yeah. Go tell Vitor. What am I going to tell him? Transponders on the ship. Find them. The transporters. Okay. And he just kind of walks I'll, out, you know, and he's thinking, he's, he's, I'll go with him. Yeah. You know, yeah. Chainsaw, Chainsaw's like, you know, Chainsaw's drank before, but you know, he's, uh, like he's, you know, he's feeling no pain at this point. This must be really be good whiskey. I think I'll go with him, Capitano. Don't worry about it. <laughs> good idea. Now, as, you, as you go, you can, you can hear him. The, the doors are shut behind him. You, you go opens up you can already hear him down the hall my door <laughs> my door where are you i'm i'm snuffing out the cigar and i'm going to stuff it inside my jumpsuit uh so i can smoke it later uh and uh i'm already i have turned my workspace into a shambles it looks very much like it did on the other ship right it looks like a wreck to anybody else but i know where everything's at <laughs> yeah back here Hey, and you, see, you see Chainsaw pushes, you know, with, with Johanna and so, you know. Yeah, it's the, like, the captain uh, says you got to look for the Transformers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I found those. I found those already. Uh, and I'm looking up at both these guys. Uh, I look over at yeah. Johanna and uh, 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 it looks like you found, uh, you found the galley. Is that all That's you found, Johanna? Uh... No, we seem to have uh, an unexpected guest, and uh, she's not exactly full of good news. Mm. Uh, seems there's some transponders on the ship we need to find before the previous owner uh, wants come uh, uh, looking to collect the property. Better get on it, Chune. It's wise. It's wise. Uh, I'll start to uh, uh, put together uh, with a uh, handheld device. I'm going to start to tweak it and, and, and put together something that will let me read any uh, hidden electronic devices that I can scan the ship with. Gotcha. Like, like a, yeah, like a pad, some kind of data pad that, that has a wireless receiver on it, and I'll start tweaking it, tinkering with it if I can. Right. I, I, I say well, this is going to be more of like an interface kind of role. To really look for these things, yeah. Uh, plus one, and I got a seven total. <laughs> okay, right on. I cracked out. You know, you're actually able, like, you know, with, with this thing to finally like locate, starts pinging stuff around, you know, starts re revealing all these these systems of the ship. And I and I'll you start, start to get following one, and I'll yeah. push uh, I'll push these two uh, big lugs out of the way as I muscle through them. You know, I'm only about five foot two, five foot three, muscle through them, and I'll follow whatever ping looks legitimate. Right, and you you get to you get to this point where you've like really got to take a panel off, like crawl and like you know down like a tube. But you know, sure enough, there there's a transponder, you know, hacked right into the into the system. You can tell from everything, you know, all all the, all the other data analysis. Once you actually get it, you know, get it plugged in, um, this is the only one. You know, there, there's a dummy one where, like, most ships have a transponder, but it's completely dummy. That's something you could that you could just remotely just turn right off. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a you know child's play sort of thing. This is the real deal. You found it, but it is it is like hooked into the systems uh, pretty well. Like it's it's gonna it's something that you can't just remove. You can't just turn off because it you know it's it's got like fail safes on it where it's gonna screw up screw up the the ship systems and ship's computers. So it's not unremovable. But it's going to be pretty daunting to get rid of this thing. Um, I don't want to get rid of this thing. 
that's not my goal. <laughs> I found it, right? But I might want to change the signal it sends. I think I'll uh, maybe attempt to send a different signal with it. Okay. Right? Gosh, I uh, It'll send out a different a ship a serial number, if that would be my goal, right? And I'll give it another name, um, something like the uh, Yohano Chainsaw will be the name of the ship. And I'll give it a new serial number, something like 69J92F. Yeah. <laughs> that would be yeah. what I'll try to do. Uh, and I'll take my time. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, so let, let's see, make this another interface roll. Interface? So, okay. Yeah. Plus one. Uh, oh, well, five. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see what we can really call this here before, you know, because I, I don't want to just. It actually changes the signal to stolen ship here. <laughs> this yeah. one. Here, boost the signal. <laughs> yeah, before I completely just, just make this up, I want to just make sure there isn't anything that. Um... Man. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> you don't fail exactly. Like you're you're starting to get somewhere, but at some point you must have hit the red button, okay. and like everything, oh, no. all the power of the ship just kind of goes down oh. for a second, and like emergency power comes back on, things are flickering and flashing. Okay. I use my uh, great equalizer, my wrench, and I bang the inside of this uh, metal tube I'm in, and I yell back, "Everything's under control. I got it. It's taken care of." I think maybe it when ain't, it ain't sending out a signal, we're good to go. <laughs> Maybe when that happens, we're in the, you know, in the galley. I'm still there with Beatrice. And uh, I think, uh, <laughs> oh, man, uh, Wheeler would probably fall back, whatever. And then the way I see it, Beatrice falls forward kind of into my arms and I catch her a little bit. And then she would like shove off a little bit, you know, and uh well, I don't know. Would but, she do that? Well, I don't know. Maybe she wouldn't. But regardless, I would sort of hold her not in like a creepy way, but just like a, I'm securing you to make sure you don't fall. And um, it's one of those moments where we're very close to each other and we're just kind of looking at each other. And um, I would say, ah, looks like having problems with the ship again. My my mechanic, he's I mean, he's good, but he's a little eccentric. Sorry eccentric. Yeah. Eccentric, what do you mean? And she's kind of like pushing off you a little bit, but not not real fast. So, yeah. And 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 Wheel looks up, he's freaking crazy. The guy's got a total screw loose. And I'll hit him again. Surprised he's gonna... <laughs> gonna try to hit him again. Okay, well this time roll, make a roll. All right. <laughs> and with metal, I assume is nine. Uh, that's actually going to be your um, your um, uh, not metal, but the other one physique. Physique. Okay, then eight. Sorry, <clears throat> yep, you're right. Physique. The, oh, hey. Okay. Cool. You pop him. The the disadvantage is he pops you back. He gets he gets a good left hook right in. Whack. <laughs> nice. And so you you take you take an injury. Uh, all right. Yep. <laughs> so you take a minor injury. Nice. Uh, can this, I say that I at least knocked the combat, him? Uh, the combat, yeah. Knocked him down though. He's he's reeling a little bit. Yeah, this okay. is the great. This, the, the combats in this game so far has been the crew killing each other. Yeah, each other. Yeah. Wheeler, how about this? From now on, you speak when I tell you to speak. I'm like, oh. and then I uh, I look over to Beatrice and I'm like, he's not wrong though. He's he's a little crazy, but listen, the best ones are crazy. Yeah, he can fix anything. But um, just don't mention his hat, all right? If you see it, he's really proud of it. I I don't know. I don't fully understand it. But just don't don't stare because it'll freak him out, okay? And you hear, like, a pop behind you. And, and you look back, and, and, like, Wheeler is taking the cap up with some, like, some syringe and is freaking whacking himself in the arm with it. Oh, God, that's better. And, uh... Oh. Wheeler, tell you what, why don't you go check on the crew, make sure everyone else is okay. It was a a nasty jolt there. 
Okay, Cap, no problem. I'm just gonna throw it. He throws the syringe, like the empty syringe, down the down on the floor, and you look down. This is this is like a painkiller that like should have like knocked an elephant out, and it's just <laughs> like something you give you give a guy before you do like major surgery on them, and he just kind of walks out. Yeah. So it's possible he may have used these several times before. Maybe. I would imagine. In the meantime, your jaw is hurt. You're thinking, man. Hmm. Well, I'm not gonna tell you what you're thinking, but you're thinking, you know, boy, I wonder where the rest of the painkillers went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, but I, I don't have too much time to think about it because there's this beautiful woman in front of me looking kind of strange at me. And um, let me see. Sorry about him. He's, uh, well, he's special as well. How, uh, how long have you been on this ship? Long enough to know when I meet special people. <laughs> she walks right out. She goes, let's find out what this engineer of yours is doing. Uh, is, uh, we're still on auxiliary, or does the main power... The main power is, like, kind of flicking back on. Um, oh, okay. okay. And, and, Vitor, you can tell something's not right, though. Like... Mm -hmm. um, the transponder's still working? The transponder still seems to be, you know, doing its job, you know, s you know screaming out its, its location and what have you. Okay. Was I able to uh, get the information in? You actually were able to get the information in. Okay. Um, um, so but you're I'll, not uh, sure. You're not sure. It was you rolled a what, like a five? Uh, four, I think. A four. Yeah, you're not. You're. It's. It. But it's. You're doing analysis. You've got stuff in there, but it's not taking. It's. It's still giving out its, its original. Its original codes. So you've got something in there. Okay. But you know, it, it's still like you could tell that like whatever kind of fail safe this thing has on it, and you know to disable if it gets tampered with, that's working really well. Okay. Because, I mean, you can't try again at some point, but it's this is something that mm -hmm. probably is going to require more equipment than you have here. Mm -hmm. and if you had the right tools, you're pretty sure that you could you could take this you know take us off. But it, it's it's not like it, the equalizer ain't going to be enough. Nope. Okay. You're actually really going to need to use some delicate tools to actually get this thing out of here. This okay. this is a, the more you look at, it, the more you realize this is a, this is a good job. Somebody okay. really knew what they were doing when they put this thing in. Okay. All right, so I'll shimmy back down this crawl space uh, and pop out, uh, of course, looking at Johano and Chainsaw. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we got it under control. It, it still needs a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of work. It's uh, it's not going to come out. It's not going to come out um, without without more work. But uh, I don't want to take it out um, because we're going to need a legitimate signal. If I take it out, we're a, we're a vessel with no legitimate signal. So. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back to my lab, and I'm gonna have to get my engineering kit. Maybe uh, uh, get some fine instruments and come back, Johanno, uh, um, and get this done. So either I can tell the captain, or you can relay that to the captain. But that that is what I'm gonna have to do. Um, how about you? Yes. What do you? Uh, I mean, is yes. that uh, are you gonna guard me all day? I mean, is that is that what the new order, the new standing order, guard uh, Viator, the mechanic? I mean, is that what's gonna happen? Nay, no, Daniel. It's okay. You fix the transponder, I'll tell the cat. Ah, Let's go. So, hey, guys, uh, at this point, apparently, you know, that you can see power, more power back on the ship. So whatever happened is starting to get, uh, you know, re, um, reintegrated. Um, by this time, your men have done, like, a, a survey of the ship. The, the ship does have a couple cannon on it. So it is, it is, it is an armed vessel. Nice. They're retractable. They're they're there's it's kind of like more of a, a stealth or a sleeper ship it's, in that regard. It's, it's concealed and then it pops out and comes. Yeah, out. Excellent. and you've got you've got you've got you've got some tourists. They're not they're not nothing major. So, I mean, they wouldn't be able to take on a real assault from a real you know destroyer. But like if, if you wanted to um, have somebody else stand down, if you're dealing with mm -hmm. space, if you're dealing with pirates, you know, yeah. you can't imagine this is kind of like more of a luxury freighter. You can't imagine somebody doing pirating with this ship. Unless they were somebody yeah. like you, <laughs> you know, yeah. but you can see themselves yeah. somebody defending themselves from it. You know, not yet. Not However, yet. it also is a pretty pretty functioning inter intercom because all of a sudden you 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 guys hear just some of the, guys. You're not going to believe this, and you realize it's Coop. Come on up on the bridge. I think I know where we are. Uh, interesting. So I'll I'll head back to the bridge. This was a ship, a wide a wide ship wide ship, ship wide. Yeah. Gotcha. Google. And uh, yeah, and like you get you, you, you see the uh, the the gal, you know, um, Trixie kind of turns around. It's like, you don't know where we are. 
<laughs> she, oh, she's saying that to me? Uh, yeah, I, I would say, no, to you? I know she doesn't, but I'm still oh. asking. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, yeah, this, this is some rescue. <laughs> like, sorry, I, I don't know what impression you got here, but we're not here to rescue anybody. Listen, sounds like my man up there knows where we are. I'm sure this will be fine. Let's just go. Viator heads back to his uh, his uh, laboratory first to make a stop before he comes up. All right. Are you doing anything in particular there on, on the way? Yes, Viator is uh, is stuffing uh, uh, cardboard or something into his shoes, and he's combing his hair, checking himself in the mirror. <laughs> he's getting his jumpsuit ah! all tidied up. Cardboard in his shoes. <laughs> so when, when he enters the bridge, everybody goes, holy... Viator's like two inches taller. His hair is combed. He's got the grease off his forehead. He still missed some. There's still a little grease over here where he missed it. It's kind of sloppy. He's got his dress you know, jumpsuit he's got, on. He's got his jumpsuit cleaned up, you know, pulled tight, zipped all the way up. And he walks in, kind of struts in. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> the bridge is the bridge. Still the hat on? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he combed his hair under the hat. Now. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Right. Yeah, matter of fact, I would have taken it off. How you doing? Put my hat back on. <laughs> you saying this to you saying this to Trixie? Yeah. Oh, give you me give me an influence Trixie. roll. Give me, yeah, 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 yeah. Beatrice, yeah. Give me give me a, give me an influence roll. Just influence just roll? Yeah. All just right. because we lack a charisma roll here. Oh, so. seven. She it looks just like, and she smiles, you know, and she is. It's a nice hat. <laughs> and I, I was like, you know, like that's I the correct you. answer. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's so that. Um, and I mean, the, the bridge just stinks of Cuban cigar smoke. You know, you're gonna say like mm-hmm. uh, just an entire stogie, like just just poked out there, and uh, and, and Coop has got stuff up on the screens. Kion Vitrovis, Cooper. What did you find? Well, we're not that. We're just on the edge of a star system. I finally was able to catalog it. It took a while because there's not too much information on this one, but I was able to triangulate from known star charts. And Captain? And he just swivels the chair, swivels the captain's chair. He said, uh, you must have really been thinking um, hard about where we're supposed to go. You know what coordinates you programmed into the wild jump? You know I don't, Cooper. Is he holding the cigar, by the way? Oh, he does, he's got a little bit of the stuff. You know. Okay. All right. No, I'll just say that for now. He said, "How oh. how long how long did you did you memorize the coordinates for the terraforming colony that the rabbit gave you?" I mean, I, a little. I don't know why. And he just he turns around. He points. It's there. We're in the system. Well, right off the fourth planet, right where it's supposed to be. Excellent. That's that's great news. Now, I'll tell you, and I, I kind of go go over to him, and I um, I grab the little cigar, you know, nub out of his hand, stub. and if, yeah, stub. And if there's if there's any <laughs> if there's enough left, I would put it in my mouth a little bit. Oh, and, there is, uh, there is. It's just yeah. a little wet. He, he kind of tends to lick the cigar. It looks like. Yeah, and I'll be like, tell you what. You leave my cigars alone next time, all right? And get out of here. Okay, sir. No problem. And then I'll <laughs> when he leaves, I'll spit and I'll throw it on the ground because it was like, you know. But, um, and then uh, I guess I would look to uh, to Vitor and um, I would say, so looks like we're where we need to be to, uh, and I would kind of you know, nod to his head or whatever. Um, and, and I'd be like, but uh, were you able to take care of the transponders? Yeah, Viator, uh, Viator doesn't hear you because he's staring at Beatrice. <laughs> Viator, Viator, <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. I can't mind, just, just, to, just to be clear, this is this is the colony you were supposed to bring the guns to in the first place. This is a colony that, as far as Vitor know, has, knows has an Elsar mech tech presence on it. Mm-hmm. This oh. is this is the place you were supposed to go for the rabbit to make a normal fee, which the rabbit kind of undercuts you on, which is probably nothing near what you would make by selling these guns to the EKA 
the AKA, AKA who also is now expecting you to sell uh, you uh, mm -hmm. you to sell them these guns. Oh we right, this was the original. The guns too. Yeah, so we got two clients and <laughs> and one shipment. So that's yes, correct, uh, Captain. Mm. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, I was thinking. I was deep in thought. Yes. Did you happen to uh, take care of the transponder signal? Um. Well, not totally. I was able to. I was able to. Well, I was able to affect it, but I can't promise that it's sending sending the signal I want to send. Okay, so but do you think that it's sending the original transponder? Meaning, if uh, if anybody picks it up, it'll register as the original ship. Uh, based on the quality of the uh, device and the uh, the fact that it is wired into the entire ship, I no. I, it's it's probably sending out it's probably sending out the 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 original ship data. The original ship data. Okay. And then I would look to Beatrice and I would say, so let me ask you this, has your, uh, has your friend Max ever ever been out in this area before? Have you ever had any dealings with the AKA? EKA? EKA, sure, Max, Max has done stuff with the EKA before, but um, who hasn't? But right here, when she was looking at the, looking at the coordinates, man, we're like on the edge of, of Conlay space here. This is... And she starts pulling stuff up, and you can tell, like you know, she is no idiot when it comes to computer system. And she pulls up, starts to pull up the charts that uh, that that Coop had up. You know, this is this is a place that's been running as a terraforming colony for 15 years now. But there, there's what I don't know what he would want to do here. This is all just kind of, you know, mech tech, Bradyac stuff. There's nothing really. It's going to take a while to like trans terraform that world. And then oh. she starts zooming stuff in, you know. Yeah, and I would and as soon as she says mech tech, I would look yeah, over to Viator. Viator yeah. is backing out of the uh, bridge very quietly. <laughs> he hears mech tech and he's his demeanor changes as he starts backing out of the bridge, hoping nobody notices him. Yeah. And, and I then, would go ahead. I I would definitely notice it, um but I would be I, I mean I know what's going on with, you know, with Vitor. And so I would say to Beatrice, you, you seem like you're pretty good with those computers. If I give you the proper coordinates, can you, uh, you help us get out of here? We got to make a jump quick. Jump quick. Why? Who's coming? Better not find out. Listen, do we have enough fuel? Can we make a jump? Hmm. Do we have enough fuel? That's a good question. Oh man, let's see. I think there is there is a rule here somewhere for fuel. I forget what it is, but I'm just gonna say, why don't you just roll me roll me two d six and we'll kind of six. Hmm. Because you are kind of low on that. That's gonna you're gonna jump now without refueling. I don't know if we're gonna have life support on the other end of that. She goes. Come to think of it, though. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he loaded. Uh, I don't think he loaded up the uh, the scourge before we you guys took it. Well, that's unfortunate. And then I would look over to Johanna and I say, "Well, buddy, looks like we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to dock on this uh, on this moon or this planet or whatever." But uh, I think we need to make sure Vitor stays on the ship. Yes. Yes, yeah, Capitano. Uh, what's our call with the weapons? Oh. We handing them over? No, no, no. I think we can. Uh, we've already promised these to uh, to someone else. We can't. We can't hand them over here. Should be. Should be no problem. They don't know who's coming with the weapons. They don't know we have them on board. All they know, we're just a trading ship passing by. Indeed. And uh, while we're giving off the uh, transponder signal for this original ship, I'm thinking maybe we can play it off that we are this Max Zemer. See what happens. But regardless, we got to get fuel, we got to get supplies, and we got to get out of here. As you say, uh, we have weapons in this new ship. Let's hope we don't need them, but 
if we get in a tight spot, at least we can do something about it. Nice. And um, Jason, what's the name of your your huge wrench again? I'm I'm sorry, you your voice went off. Oh, the the name of your huge wrench again? Uh, the the equalizer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I would tell Johanno and uh, let Viator know. Make sure he's got the equalizer close at all times. Mm. I think he will do that anyway. First mention of uh, Elsor Mectic. He probably, <laughs> he probably will. will, but I don't know if he's if he's busy building a thicker hat. I just maybe keep an eye on him. <laughs> yeah, I I would be collecting my engineering kit and headed back to the uh, corridor where the transponder is. All right. Right. All right. I I don't know. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm still trying to change that signal. Yeah. Right. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know the other. Yeah. yeah go ahead. And I think if if you if you're doing that, I, I I don't really care honestly if he changes it. I mean that's fine. But um, I think I would tell Beatrice, listen, we're gonna have to head down to Planet get some supplies. You uh, you fancy coming off uh off the ship? Well, she looks and she's like, it's going. It's like, well, I'll tell you what. If we head onto the planet, we're gonna die. Uh, because that thing's not going to be fully terraformed for another 30 years. But if we go to the station in orbit, because that might work. And she gives you this like smile like, I can't believe you're that stupid. <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's what, what I meant. The, smile. The, the station, the station. Um, I don't want to go down to the planet, but uh, I imagine they got some supplies there. Yeah, because they should. And she goes, do you know how to fly? Or do you want me to do that too? I know how to fly. <sighs> And I would sit down in the captain's chair and kind of brush it off because, you know, get the coop stink off of it. And uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, I would I would fly it in. And, and at some point, I don't know if they hail us or if I would send a, a signal. But, um, you know, I, I would I would communicate that this is the I guess it's still saying the Valkyrie Scourge uh, requesting access to, to dock. Well, OK, what you know, what's managed to go on, you know, during this time is like you're you're kind of like in the outer like almost orc cloud of this particular system. But, you know, once you've been given these coordinates already, you know, once, uh, once Coop and, uh, and Beatrice actually kind of clued you into the fact that, you know, you are in a particular area, it's pretty easy to just kind of like, you know, make a straight line for it um, mm -hmm. at, at, at like sublight um, speed. Um, you know, as Vitar goes back and looks at this thing again, he just, you, you get this, like, yes, you can take this thing out, but you just, you need some more sophisticated equipment. Okay. You need, uh, uh, you, you, and, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, so then I would just attempt to change the signal. A, a, a different serial number, different, uh, a yeah, different you're, uh, call sign. You're, you're getting the, you're getting the, uh, the feeling too that you're going to need that just like this. Like you're just getting locked out of this thing over and over again. Okay. I mean, you know, there's, there's tools available that will allow you to do this, but you don't have them on the ship. Um, it's possible like any reputable mech tech. Area would have would have tools like this. Okay. Um, but you did have to leave some stuff behind when you when you ran from one ship to the other. Um, but okay. as you guys manage to get closer and closer to the station, you're not getting hails back. Mm. Okay. And you finally are able to like you're, you're this thing. It's a rather uh, you know uh, station, space station. It's it's big. It's something that would you know like hold you know a few thousand people, because it's meant for long term habitation while they're doing like terraforming. You could you you know scans or show like they have big devices on the planet's surface like you know recycling atmosphere all that kind, of converting the atmosphere to something that's more uh, more conducive to life like oxygen. Um, but this is a this is a long term like, like it's kind of like you're familiar with these things are kind of like quasi scientific output, and also just you know long term long-term colonization uh, type efforts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's really odd. You're just not getting any signals back. And the closer you get, you're not really seeing any kind of activity either. Yeah. Would the ship have, uh, would I be able to ascertain if the ship has like sensors that could scan for life forms? Kind of rudimentary. And power. Are we getting power readings of the... Uh station like is it yeah systems functioning in the station or is it dead in space well give me a 
Well, give me an assessment roll. Give me an assessment roll um, with, uh, we'll call it interface. Well, I get a six. Okay. The GM will reveal facts you probably wish were not true. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Let me I got you, I'm, I'm going to try and assist them. Okay. See if I can. But how? Like... But how? But, but how? Gonna... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be over his shoulder. I'm going to be saying uh, scan for power as well. Uh, Capitano, that'll be the first indication of what life are in there. And I'll try and tweak, uh, I don't know, the antenna or something and point it more toward the, uh, toward the uh, I don't Station know, focusing the, the sensors in some way. So here we go. That is an 8 minus 1 is a 7. Okay. And my involved role, so... Uh, so I think oh, that... so I can I can turn it into it was what what, what did it, you roll so it was it? a six which was a failure but that would bump it up into the seven through nine range so yeah partial success com- correct but uh, you incur a cost a complication or hard choice in order to get involved right so. well so you're able to determine that the, the station has power like it hasn't lost main power a lot of systems are offline though. It's kind of odd. Um, you know, you don't have the, it's, it's not so much you have the ability to scan for life forms. You have the ability to scan for like whether or not, you know, like life support systems are operational. Um, mm-hmm. They're marginally operational. It looks like some of the, some of the, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the gravity, the place is actually done by spinning, but there's some sections where it does anti, you know, anti-grab more in the center. Those things are completely offline. Uh, the temperature controls are all off, so you can tell there's there's parts of the station that are ridiculously cold. Yep. All right. But you can't see any kind of you know reason why. And there's lights on. It's not like it's it's all dark or anything, but it's just you know, it's just odd. Hmm. I say, well, I don't know what we're getting ourselves into here, but. I think at the very least we better bring environmental suits aboard. I don't know if there's going to be oxygen on there, and you uh, you may want to bring some some of the bigger guns. I have my armor. That'll keep me. Uh, it's uh, environmentally sealed, so I'll be fine. I'll uh, I'll talk to the crew. I'll put a boarding party together. Maybe we can find some fuel in there. Uh, I'll I'll take some weapons. If we run into survivors, uh, they might be desperate. If they realize there is a ship here, and if they're in in trouble, they might try to rush us to get on board. Yeah, I agree. And uh, maybe leave one guy with the to watch over the doctor. I don't want him causing any more trouble. <laughs> And then uh, I think yes. I would hit the comm, and um, I would say, Vitor, Vitor, please come to the bridge. Yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a cost? I'm sorry, but as, before Vitor says anything, oh, okay. there's a cost to this. And as, as Johanna says, you know, having somebody over to watch the doctor, you hear a voice behind you, whoa, look at that. <laughs> and you realize, you realize that Wheeler has, has made himself up to the bridge and he's in the back. Whoa. Unbelievable. What do you think happened? <laughs> uh, okay, Vitor, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I, I would have shimmied out of the crawl space. And at this point, realizing that uh, there is no alternative uh, to at least hiding this ship, uh, I would be making my way back to the cargo hold. I would crack open one of these uh, cargo and do something that is uh, – uh, not uh, normally in my, uh, not normally part of my um, my personality. I will I will I will fish a handgun out of one of these crates and uh, look it over. Uh, uh, I'm not satisfied with it, but I know that it it it, it may be uh, it may be the difference between me and uh, becoming a victim of mech tech. And I will uh, stuff this into my into my jumpsuit and zip it up 
uh, padding it around, making sure it isn't totally obvious. This that's going to be. I mean, you can do this. This is a large handgun. The the, the weapon the weapons are very bizarre. I mean, they're they're slug throwers. They're you know, mm -hmm. but they are just some some odd weapons. And so this okay. is a big this is a big handgun. So you can fit it in there. But it's it's kind of funny. I mean, you're not a little you're not a big guy. So you've got right. this, you know about this giant pistol. <laughs> you may have to walk a little stiffly, <laughs> but you can you can you can get it there. At, at, at this rate, uh, as long, you know, I just I just want to make sure I have a uh, pistol, knowing that uh, I'm I'm uh, I can't count on uh, I can't count on the luck of the draw here. Uh, and I'll kick off my shoes, kick uh, uh, take the cardboard out, boot uh, lace my shoes back up, and uh, uh, go about back to my uh, my little workshop. I feel like there should be like a, a musical montage yeah. while you're doing this. Too. Oh, I'm sorry. The captain had called me. I'm sorry. I'll head up to the bridge. I, admit, I forgot that. Sorry. Okay. I'll head to the bridge. Yeah, and I think when you get there, I would, I would kind of look to you and I would motion out the viewport and I would, you know, kind of show you what's going on and I would say, Vitor, what do you make of this? We're not getting very good power readings. I don't know if there's anybody alive on board. You, uh, you feel like you want to come and check it out with us? Or would you feel more comfortable staying here? So I'll look out the viewport. Um, hmm. Well, uh, there will be a union shop, uh, no doubt, probably more than one on this space station. Um, there's tools that I need there. Um, and we might even be able to, uh, uh, with this chip in my head, uh, procure more information. But, um, uh, I am I am a uh, I am a security risk for your team. It says I'm not worried about the security risk. In fact, I don't even know if uh, if there's anybody on board. But we need supplies, and if you need tools, then yes, let's do this. Excellent. And then I I would look to Beatrice, and um, I would say, well, you feel like uh, taking a, a trip off the ship here. I, I know Viator would certainly appreciate the company. She looks at Vitar. <laughs> she, she goes, yeah, yeah, I'll go off. Why not? It's like, what could possibly go wrong that hasn't gone wrong? Already? Awesome. <laughs> and, uh, but, yeah. she, she, but I need my gun back. And um, I would Vitor, say... Uh, Vitor unzips his jumpsuit and hands this hand cannon to and him. I'm like no 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 like and I, 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 I would what I was I would grab it yeah. before he does that um and and I would say no I, I don't think that's necessary I think Johanno and, and and his boys will be able to uh provide all the security we need oh good because I did not want to have to handle that thing she goes, do you think I'm she goes, listen, listen captain do you think I'm stupid I just heard a speech you just gave him danger security risk whether you want me to go on the ship without a weapon you can go on the ship or not, but I'm not giving you a weapon. Well, you're freaking... Yeah, but Captain, Bosner already took mine. Captain, we can't leave her here. There won't be a ship when we come back. I agree. Oh, we'll leave We'll leave somebody behind to watch. Yeah, but um, she can seduce um, all these fools that you call... Uh, uh, you know... Yeah, I would crew. trust her and Chainsaw would be off with uh, on a honeymoon with this damn thing. <laughs> no offense. Uh, what's your name, Beatrice? Yes, Beatrice. It's like that's a good point. Yeah, you better come with us, Beatrice. Let's go. Cause my hands are empty. Mm hmm. They are. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh -huh. And I'll, so you're bringing, I'll, bringing, I'll, 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 I'll start holding the gun at, at her if, if wait, necessary. Wait, but wait, we got a bigger problem. Who's watching Wheeler? And uh, I would look to Johanno <laughs> if he's there, and I would say I, I've, yeah. I've tasked him with that. Not not Johanno, but with one of his men. Uh, so Johanno leans over. Uh, Capitano, I think we should leave uh, a small contingent. Uh, at least three or four men. Uh, maybe one of them can watch uh, the doctor. Uh, is the uh, woman coming with us? Or she is. Okay, so we can keep an eye on her. 
then uh, I'll lead the way uh, with uh, Marco and uh, Dimitri. You guys uh, stay a bit back, but uh, we'll look for these things uh, that the engineer needs some fuel for the ship as well. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll go suit up. Uh, I'll leave the guards. Uh, the password to get back will be Verdastelo. Green Star. Wait, Remember that. Wait, Green wait. Star. I can't say that. You're going to have to have something better than that. <laughs> Green Star, Ingeniero. Green star. It's easy. Green Star. All right. Make sure your men know Green Star. Yeah. Esperanto is not something that Vitar really cared about. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Captain I'm, not gonna, speak I'm not gonna get left no. on that station because I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll be like, and uh, we better suit up. Let's go. All right. And so yeah, make preparations, get the EVA suits on, and everything. Yeah, Trix, Trixie is not happy, but she puts an EVA. Still not really happy about the. Uh, the situation. Well, looks a bit ridiculous because these are made for at least uh, between <laughs> five eight and six one, so everything's yeah, baggy it. and big on Viator. Yeah, it's got that wrinkly look, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, Johanna has... Everything's uh, just a little long. Yeah. Looks a little bit like the kid in uh, in A uh, uh, Christmas Story, the little brother. Yeah, you know, I can't yeah. put my arms down. Yeah. He's got that. <laughs> nice. Uh, Johanna I can't has... work like this. <clears throat> Johanna has boarding armor. So it's like an armored spacesuit, basically. Right. And he clips nice. the gun to the side and takes the shotgun with him as well. Right, and as uh, you said, so you know the uh, um, Marco and Dimitri would have the same thing, being part of the you know, whole unit. So yeah, so mm -hmm. they're set up pretty impressive looking. Actually, docking it, docking is no problem. You know the airlock kind of hisses. It's really cold air. Uh -huh. um, you could tell like the power is off at least to the kind of the life support sections of this area of the of the station. It's a big station. Are the lights flickering? And... Oh, there's the, there's the flickering lights. Yeah. You know, there's there's some sparks. Of, you know, the, the, the terminals yeah. you walk by with the green light flickering. Yeah. I swear to God, if Cthulhu Turn shows on. up on here, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Turning on the uh, the spacesuit lamps that always go yeah. off the helmets, yeah. which is it's like, yeah, it's dark. You've got the you've got yeah, like, <laughs> nice. Yeah. nice. And, uh, there, is, there is there is there is anti gravity simply just because the ship is spinning. Okay, so yeah, so there's grab. All right, that's good. And I mean, well, you're, on the, you're, on the, you're on the outer edge. I mean, the closer you get towards the center of this, it's you know the anti grab is going to be off, at least offline this section. Would would so, Vitor be able to to uh, <clears throat> operate like a like a hand scanner? <laughs> Do we think? Oh, yeah. Or yeah, okay, yeah. maybe. Uh, when, um, you turn, when you turn to talk to him, uh, his headlamps are kind of twisted and skewed, pointing at the ceiling, and uh, you know everything is just not quite. Right. Slightly off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I, would, I would look at him for a minute and I'd be like, hey, does your uh, your scanner, is they telling us, do we have oxygen? Can we breathe on this station? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. So I have, I have uh, Johanna's taking point on this thing, and I have this ability called Boldly Go when right. leading an expedition into the unknown world plus metal uh and there's a couple of things to choose from let's see how well i will all right now okay cool nice and, oh god <laughs> and you all die okay so what happened we all die so that's like uh six so okay. nothing nothing good can come up right all uh, to go so yeah okay yeah <laughs> wait he's got a shotgun yes uh -huh. Say no, say no. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah. Let me uh, let me see that shotgun there, uh, Johano. I, I get out my engineering kit, and set it down, yeah. pop it open, go pick up one of my tools, with a couple of pieces. Give me that shotgun. I can upgrade that shotgun for you. Uh, <laughs> I have the Maybe. skill upgrade. Oh, and nice. uh, I can upgrade anything to a, another, the next class up. Oh, Ooh. nice. Yeah. So like, hand it over and see what happens. <laughs> Worst case scenario, no matter. Worry. I've got expertise yeah. plus two. Uh, oh, 13. Oh. 13. Oh, All right. Yes. 11 plus two, 13. Nice. 
<clears throat> Wonder, and that yeah, just upgrades the class of that weapon to the next level, and it's, oh, it wow. just says in the book for a short time. I have no clue what that means. I think I think you get to pick an upgrade at least for a little while. Oh. Yeah. I think that's what that means, but I don't know. Either you or Johanna, like, pick an upgrade as far as, like, what else the shotgun can do now. So you, 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 you. Sure, sure. You'd have to pick for a list. Just make it up, man. What, what, do, you, what do you want that shotgun to be able to do? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking ideas of what the... Uh... If you have page, the book, page it's on page 115. Yeah, 115, 116, yep. 115. Yeah, 116, yeah. 116. It's pretty awesome. Don't do explosive. <laughs> um, in the yeah. meantime, though, I guess I would ask, uh, af after Vitor's done that, be like, hey, so uh, good work on the shotgun there, but uh, can you tell me if, if we can breathe on this thing without these suits? <clears throat> That's That would be an assessment. Is that right, uh, Ivan? It is, it is. And, like, there's, you know, you don't, like, really have a hand scanner or something like mm -hmm. that. Like, you're actually going to have to, like, you know, mess with the, mess with the, um, the, uh, the ship systems itself. Okay. I, mean, you, I mean, you know, you can, you know, your chip could actually interface with some stuff it if it was actually online. I'll, uh, I'll just crack my helmet a little bit. Okay. It, 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 it is freezing. Yeah. It's, but it, can um, I agree? Take a deep breath in. Yeah, it is. It is. You're like, okay, you're not getting lightheaded. Nothing okay. seems to be happening yet. I, I twist it off. <gasps> you smell, you smell like, a little ozone. Uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you can breathe. You smell a little ozone. But, it, but it's cold. I'm like, you're like, this is, this is, you're not going to want to have your helmet off for a really long time. You get some, some life support systems back on the line. Yeah, you, my, my lips start turning blue pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, gr it's great. <laughs> I'd be like, me, that's not the way to check to, to check for oxygen. Put, gah. and then I put uh, my helmet back yeah. on, and I'm like, oh. what's really it's odd crazy. though is you're not you're not getting any kind of signals from like other mech tech, you know, chips. They're not trying to do like the whole mind meld that they're trying to do. Any well, that that dead. for me is a total relief. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> This is incredibly unusual, uh, Captain. Um, I'm not picking up any uh, interference or any mech tech signals. And that is, that is, um, that would be very uh, out of the ordinary. Something is really amiss here. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's see if we can find perhaps a uh, computer terminal. Maybe that'll give us a clue. Let's go. I think we should head to a base security. We're looking for a base security room. Yeah. Oh, nice. I'll signal base, ahead. And... Uh, space station security. Yeah. Sp yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'll signal and start moving ahead. We'll All right. So, yeah. Are you, you, you sending Marco or Dimitri more than you, or are you going first? I think I'm going first. I mean, the whole the spirit of the things is that, I, that even though I failed, All right. I'll go with that. Okay, you're continuing down. The, the station continues to be dark. Mm -hmm. There's still some areas where there's there's some sparks. There's the you know the, it looks like the computer systems are like mostly offline. Some are kind of booting back up. Um, you finally like you go go around like a, a corner that the hallway turns, and you come to like a big like bulkhead type door, and you realize looking at it, it's been welded. Like from the other, probably from the other side. It was like something like welded this door shut. Nope, I've seen this movie. Let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Capitano is uh, very strange. It's welded from the inside. Uh, I'm gonna walk up with my uh, my wrench, the equalizer, big metal wrench, and I'm gonna bang on the door, see if I get a knock back. Uh, yeah. uh, dun, dun. Uh, hey, give, me, give me, give me, give me, give me, because this is too interesting. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. It cut out. What did give you me, want? Give me, give me, give me a roll. Just give me a flat out two d six roll. So he says, snake Zero. eyes. Oh, snake, snake eyes. Snake eyes. <laughs> double, double ones. Oh no. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> That's well, exactly what Ivan wanted. Cthulhu. It's not, it's not what Ivan called it. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's like they welded it from the inside. Probably right. means they're fr- afraid of what is on the outside. Mm. And you don't you don't hear knock you don't hear knock back, but you do hear some kind of this weird eerie like chittering sound like, <laughs> coming from the other side. And it's almost like a metallic scraping. And then it kind of stops, but it just kind of echoes. On the other side of the door. On the other side, yeah. Looks like we're on the right side of the door, folks. (laughs) I don't know. Looks like whatever was wrong, they locked in. So I think we're okay. (laughs) Let's hope. But can we get the supplies we need without having to go through that door? I don't know. On this big space station, that's our only door? I mean, it's good. No, there's got to be another way around, but... I I'm gonna, I'm gonna step back and look for vents, uh, crawl spaces, anywhere that a mech tech uh, guy would work. You know, I would have to shimmy. Oh yeah, no, you, you you can absolutely. You just, uh, I'm gonna look for a one ceiling that would hatch be on the on the same wall as this door, though. So I'm looking for a vent that would be on the same wall as this welded door. Oh yeah, sense? yeah, absolutely. You find an entryway. Is no. it welded? No. Uh, Gentlemen, I suggest I go through the uh, the maintenance hatch and see what I can find. And um, I would hand my little gun to him, holding onto the big Desert Eagle type thing, and I would say, why don't you take this with you just in case? Okay. Uh, and I'll unzip and stick it in, zip it up. Like, yeah, that's better. That, that fits better. But, um, and I'll so you uh, open I'll your turn, suit. You I'll put some incredibly cold gun on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll turn to Beatrice. I'll be I'll be and uh, I go over and start unscrewing the screws, and pull the the grate off, uh, adjust my lamps now so they're into the vent, and then I'll start crawling through with my my kit. I'll push my kit ahead, and my wrench is always in hand, and I'll crawl in. Right. And what is your intention? Yeah, it's yeah. to get to the uh, to get to the at least to another vent so I can see maybe it what's in that room or uh, uh, I have to get in there I have to find access. All right, you're able to crawl through with without a problem. Um, you can finally find another another vent that like allows you to see into the other room, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's dark. But you're able to actually, like, you know, um, are you trying to look look through or actually get in? Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm well. I'm looking first. If I can't see, if it's dark, I'll I'll pop it off. It's dark. You can't really see. You can you can make some like piles of something on the floor. You're not really sure what they are. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Don't. Yeah, yeah. Piles of something zombies, on the floor. Man, it's the zombies. Space zombies. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll fumble out. Uh, fumble out. Well, you know what? I'm more comfortable with my wrench, so I'm gonna keep my wrench and I'm gonna push this off. And it clangs with one clang, 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 clang. Oh. Yeah, skitter, skitter, skitter. They welded themselves in to keep the contagion inside, <laughs> keep it from spreading. I've got, a, I've got an EV suit on, right? So I'm okay. Right, yeah. 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 And uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna crawl out a little bit and now see if I can uh, see more with my headlamps. Just, yeah. just my shoulders and head. Yeah, you can see more. You, the the room um, is a rather large room. It's about like a good, good sixty by fifty. A bunch of terminals in here. Um, some actually seem to be operational. Okay. You realize as you come in the the piles of something on the floor. There's at least three or four bodies. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will go ahead and stand up and get out, and I'm going to look for where they've welded the door. Yeah, and you can see that it's it's like say a pretty pretty crappy job. It looks like somebody took a torch and just welded the door shut. Okay. Now where's no. the other uh, exits out of here? There's another another um, exit in the back of the room. Okay. Um, I'm gonna head over to the welded door, and I'm mm-hmm. gonna bang on it a couple times. You guys hear this bang, 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 bang? Is that is that Vitor? I'll open and then the, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start looking about for a torch. The torch they we use. We gotta have well. we gotta have some radios. Uh, Ingeniero, where are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm on the other side of this door. Is it really <laughs> welded <laughs> shut? Yeah, I'm looking for a torch. Wait a second, and I'm gonna start looking around for a torch. whatever they use to weld this shut. 
Yeah, you after a while you can, you can find there's definitely an oxy acetylene torch over there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna check the canister, make sure it's got some juice. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll uh, tap back. I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a hole in this door for you. We're okay. It's just dead bodies. They can't harm us. And then I uh, I'll start. Uh, I'll light this torch up. Start cutting uh cutting the door. Not their torch. I'm just gonna cut a door inside the frame of that. Just big enough that uh, everyone can get in except the big guy. <laughs> I want to make idea. him squirm through it. I'm going to make him yeah. have to fight through the hole that I put. Yeah, that takes just, you a little while, but you're actually able to do I that. Can. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, you, you see at this, this point, as you can see, this door starting to form, you know, Beatrix looks at that. The cat's like, what the hell is he doing? Can I have a gun now? Can I have a gun now? No, you can't have a gun. And so finally, after an agonizingly long time, you know, the clang of the, the metal is this, this other uh, new door, small door, mm-hmm. opens up. This this Vitor-sized door, if you will. <laughs> right. It fits, it fits me just fine. And then I'll stick my head out. <laughs> Let's go. So I'll, I'll squeeze in first, like, sideways and... You know. It says, uh, keep a keep a lookout, Ingeniero. Uh, you said there's dead bodies in here. Yeah, and I I just kind of point them out. Uh, there's one there, there's one there, there's one over there. Yeah. And then um, I'm gonna uh, say to Beatrice, there's a couple of computer terminals that look like they're up and running. Why don't you see what you can find on those, Beatrice? You seemed pretty handy with the computer on the bridge. It's okay, and she she starts. Pulling stuff up, and it looks like most of the power is is off. We should be able to get it back up and running. She starts whacking stuff, and like lights start popping on a little bit. Um, Turn the heat up while you're at it, Beatrice. Johanna signals to to Dimitri and uh, and Marco to keep an eye out, and I'll go check one of the dead bodies, looking for gunshot wounds or or I don't know slash stab wounds or, or, you know, cause of death, basically what's going on. Uh, you can see a few lacerations on uh, on the bodies. These tend to be like, you know, they almost look like, like uh, kind of like knife wounds. They're really jagged, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go over to the next body and confirm if it's the same type of wounds. Yeah, it looks looks like they've been they've been slashed up a little bit. So I'll speak up, Capitano. These people have been slashed uh, with some sort of sharp object, maybe claws. I don't know. Yeah, but no gunshot wounds, at least. Whatever is in there, we probably have the advantage. Keep a sharp lookout, Marco, Dimitri. Uh, you, see, you see Dimitri's like crossing himself. <laughs> like, uh, let's let's not stay in this room too long. Let's just get to where we need to be, find supplies, and get out of here. And you know what you're able to find, you know, is, as uh, as Beatrice is, is like interfacing with the computers, is like she's having a hard time actually keeping systems up and running. You can see a station wide schematic though. It's obvious, like instantly, like where the where the mech tech labs are. Uh, you can see where the the fuel would be kept. You know, station this size, too, you can siphon a bunch of power from as long as you're here long. But it's going to take some time. Yeah, can we get the fuel, like, if we dock on the outside, can we get fuel there, or do we have to roll barrel? You're going to probably have to redock in a, in a different mm-hmm. area. You're, you're docked in more mm-hmm. a, uh, a personnel-type dock as opposed to, like, a... a um, a, a refueling docking area, so they actually have to redock a ship in another area. I would probably, um, you know, if I realized that, I might try to, uh, you know, communicate back to Coop on the ship and, and tell him that and be like, look, you know, go make arrangements, get the ship over to the other dock so we can uh, we can get fuel, if that's all right. It's like, you know, you hear him rave back, okay, you know, we are going to be... Uh... Yeah, he goes, I can do that, but, you know, we're going to be docking the other side of the station, so you guys are going to have to make your way to it. I understand, but listen, do not exit the ship 
and do not let anyone on without the password. You got it? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Excellent. What's the password again? Are you serious? Ah, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, man. Just kidding. And you know, you can see you can see in the visual uh, of him as, as it comes up to you. There's smoke coming from something. Yeah. Oh, lighting up again. Yeah. While they're uh, while they're he's while well, Johanna's uh, checking things out, and she's on the computer, and while the captain's talking, I'm gonna s sidle over to Beatrice and uh, nudge her a little bit and slip the gun uh, under her arm uh, uh, onto the onto the computer <laughs> terminal, and I'm gonna wink at her. Which gun is that? The little one that he gave me. Okay. Yeah, His little, little silence. Little... And I'm gonna say, there, don't now you don't forget where you got that. <laughs> I will, and she looks at you. Looks at you, the short man. She looks at this little gun. She goes, "Size matters, you know." <laughs> and, she, and she stuffs this in the pocket of of her, her her EVA suit, where it's not really that noticeable. Which, unlike the big giant hand cannon that you had, this is pretty easy to stow away, where nobody would notice it. All right, all right. Well, it's so crazy I'll people say, stowing yeah. their guns. I'm holding my gun, this hand cannon yeah, out. Yeah, in the open. Yeah. So, Capitano, we have fuel. What else do we need here? Well, Vitor said he needed some special tools, tools. or something at the Elsor lab, but uh, and... so I want to. I'm going to want to go to a computer and pull up the nearest Union shop uh, on a map close to this room. If we can, if we can find where you are here. Yeah. Oh, that's fairly easy to do. Yeah. And then uh, I'm going to uh, tell the captain, you know, whatever whatever information I get here, how far I need to go, and where I need to go. These tools. These tools. Yeah, yeah. It's a few a few decks away. Should be should be relatively easy to uh, to get there. Okay. Um. So I will uh, make mental note of it, and uh, uh, then I'll suggest that uh, somebody escort me at least to the union shop so I can get these tools. I think we should all go. I don't think it makes. I don't think it's a good idea for us to split up at this point. Yeah. Especially as we don't know exactly what happened here. Might be something loose on the station. Kill this, these two, maybe more. Gotcha. You start to go through the different decks. You can kind of like figure out the the uh, the pathway you're gonna need to take. Um, you open up one door. You know, um, it's like kind of like an electric, you know, sort of sort of door. And you instantly hear the hiss of air, and you realize you vacuum particular deck. Okay. Um, and you know you you uh you get past you know an area where you, where you realize like an airlock uh oh you know you're not being sucked out of there because the door is shut behind you but like it's you know this particular this particular deck has just been like completely exposed to the vacuum of space okay uh is it just because they opened the airlock there's no punctures or there's no puncture it's not like there's a hole breach or anything like that okay okay so i'll i'll Approach the airlock and try to uh, cycle it. Yeah, just for, it's, for it cycles. It cycles without yeah. without a problem. It's like yeah, one of the just, last uh, last systems on on the station to really be affected by the power loss. That's that's, that's tapped into the, the real emergency power. Mm -hmm. But keep keep moving. I'll say, mm -hmm. won't take too long. And but I want to make sure that that's sealed. You know, in case <laughs> I don't know, there's a breach somewhere else. At least. Right. Yeah. And Marco, like Marco's, you know, goes goes, goes to Johannes. Like, I don't like this, sir. I don't like this at all. I don't like it either, Mark. Janiero needs the tools, and we need to get to the uh, fueling section. Back to the ship. Be quick about it. All right. You think the rabbit sent us into a trap? I hadn't even thought of that. Doesn't make well. Oh. Why would he give us the weapons then? Maybe no, this doesn't make sense. No, but unexpected. but whoever wanted those weapons might have wanted them for exactly whatever problem they were dealing with here. Hmm. Either way, we can make a lot more money selling them to the EKA. So let's let's. Uh... Yeah, let's so stick to the no plan. One, there's no one to sell them to, sell them to here anyway, right? Exactly. Looks like he's not our only. There are. That's one customer down. See if we can get right. those tools and get ourselves out of here. Maybe we can go make that payday after all. 
doesn't take too much longer to actually get to the to the uh, the MacTech lab, mm-hmm. and you find it's actually pretty well appointed. It does have. Uh, Viator stops short uh, by you know about ten feet as everybody else approaches and looks over the door, the union shop. You know, thinks to himself, "I'd hope to never be within twelve feet of this ever again." And then he'll steal himself. And approach the uh, the door for this union shop. Yeah, All right. I got and, the you know gun pointed just in case. And, and I would probably, if there's a key cat, I would start using the the codes that I would have known that would probably that I would know that would open up union shops and see if any right. of them might open this. A lot of the codes are like not working, but you're you're, you're free to roll an access roll, and roll plus interface. See whether you can actually six and two eights interface yes. is nine. So nine. Okay. Well, you're able to able finally you, you're able to ascertain what uh, what makes it work. You, know, you can feel the chip kind of humming in your head too, as it's also making contact. And I kind of jump at that yeah. because that's not what I want to feel at all. Yeah, and then as he jumps, I would jump as well a little bit, like you know, yeah. You okay? What, what's going on? And I'll uh, touch my temple. Yeah, the, the tin foil it's, it's not helping. You uh... uh, what I was worried about. It's it just uh, they now know uh, if I know they're here, they know I'm here. Let's hope there's no they. Indeed. And then uh, say... I'll step into the doorway. If, you said it's opened. It opened. Yeah, door was, yeah. doors open. I'll I'll say it's a well appointed shop. Yep. The AC engineer, let me go first. Okay. I, I stick my head in with the shot around any obvious threats. And Nothing if there I'll start stepping in and I'll motion for fighter to. Yeah, so I'll step in the minute uh, uh, Johanno gives me the clear. And then uh, I'm going to point. I'm going to look at, I'm going to make eye contact with Johanno and I'm going to point to where the tools I need would be. Mm-hmm. And basically let him know that that's where we need to go in the shop. Yeah, so I'll move ahead and I want to. You know, and I'll get closer to the cabinet. Where he... And um, I'm going to make my way uh, following him to that area. And then I'm going to try to secure uh, all the tools that, uh, that I know I need for this job on the ship. And any tools that I think I may need. Uh, that I that I wouldn't have seen in the um, in my workshop on this freighter that I can carry. I mean, obviously, I can. Right. But you're, you're able to like fill up fill up duffel bag <laughs> or two okay. of some and stuff. I but you, you, too. I'm running. I'm I'm grabbing chips and computer chips and tools and wires and I'll pick something up and look at that and smile and take it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Start nice. piling stuff in, and then I'll swing this bag, which is clearly now going to uh, make me. A little clumsy, maybe, over my shoulder because it's going to be packed. And then uh, uh, I'm going to point to a computer terminal and uh, um, say to the captain, uh, I think while I have a chance without interruption, I think I should tap their computer terminal and see if I can interface and download as much information as I can, maybe find out what might have happened. Uh, Mech Tech knows everything. All right, if you think that uh, you can do that with minimal amount of danger, go for it. Oh, it might might help us to know something. Uh, so I'll, I'll head over to this terminal, and I'll throw my bag down, um, and then I'll uh, log in. And it, I would assume, because there's no actual plug-in, that it reads through my retina. We yeah. Really, I, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And like I plug it <laughs> something into my head, right? No, of course, does go starts just do the rest of the scan. That's the next thing you get the Wi-Fi going on. It yeah. starts humming. You, you can feel this little familiar connection yep. going on. Yep. Uh, and uh, so, what would I need to roll here for this? Does that be uh, access? Um, yeah, you can you can do an access. So you roll, roll plus interface. Okay. Uh, twelve thirteen. So I've rolled double zeros and I've rolled double sixes. Nice. Oh, nice, nice. So you, so you get the you get the data point too with this with this sucker. Oh, right. Right. oh yeah. Getting right. the whole spectrum. Tonight. That's that's a good <laughs> spot for a data for a data point too. I mean, yeah. that's that could be valuable. And right. the data point I I have to spend now, right? Or I can hold it. 
Is that right? You can, you can hold You get a plus to another roll later on. Something That's what I thought. Okay. Into this, I believe, is, is how it works. Um, so I'm looking, uh, uh, hopefully, with this access, I want to find out uh, what has happened here. Um, and certainly uh, um, where Mech Tech, uh, where this particular station, where Mech Tech would have gone, where the employees would have been told to go, where where Mech Tech would have rallied the troops on this station and why. That's what I'd be looking to get. Okay. You start pulling tons of data. It's it's definitely not it's not a Mech Tech station as a, as such, but it is something that Mech Tech has a strong presence in because it is is like you know the a uh, you know terraforming type operation something that requires a lot of a lot of engineering you know to pull off a feat like this. Um, you start to see a lot of references to sentient Q thirty eight M. Sentient Sentient Q thirty eight M being a problem. M being problem or yeah Q thirty eight dash M. Q thirty eight dash M problem. Yeah, and the sentience sent, and then you start to get more and more information. Some sort of sentient species. Okay, um, I'm I'm actually saying this aloud to them as I read it as I bring it in. I'm actually saying this to my colleagues aloud. Yeah. And something I think of, you know, about, about this, this, um, you know, what the humans have found out about the galaxy is there just aren't that many. You know, space turned out to be relatively empty. We were waiting for everybody to show up and, and have all the aliens. And they're really, you know, the closest thing that, you know, most people have ever heard of, honest to God, alien, would, would be things that the, the, uh, the, uh, what, wait, what did I call that faction? <laughs> the, the Lyra, the, the, the Lingua Hyra. Lingua Hyra. Lingua Syndicate, and they're they are more, as far as we can tell, human beings with, with some kind of symbiont that have been encountered another another sentient species. This was something a little bit more different, a little more hostile. And you start to get not everything is 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 stuff that you can get into, um, because it appears that like you're you're going through all the mech tech files. The the actual administration of the station was not mech tech. So there appeared to be at least some kind of negotiations going on for a while that did not go well. And there was some kind of hostilities. And then there's uh, um, a lot of uh, references to to uh, weapons and needing needing specific weapons because of the resistance of this particular species. And they start talking uh, quite a bit about the, uh, uh, let me see, because I wrote the plasma decoherence rifles. That's right. And, 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 and species species Q38M being um, very hard to take down with with conventional weapons, and talk. And then you get more and more stuff about the illegality of such weapons, banned by you know a, a more uh, Geneva Convention because of how horrific these particular weapons were, mm -hmm. and you know finally uh, the idea of getting some acquiring some. Okay. This is Tre Malbona, Picano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If these things are loose in the station, mm -hmm. all we have are conventional weapons. Yeah, we got to get out of here right now. You got, Vitor, you got everything you need? The, term, uh, your, the chip starts to like really start to hum in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and the terminal starts going, Mech Tech Agent, report. Report. What is the situation now? Uh, you... And I'll give my. This is Viator uh, 3892. We're on now. What's the name of the space station? Did we get that? It is, it is Colony 67J92F. This is Colony 60. I, I missed that again. 67J92F? Yeah. 67J is good enough. Man. Uh, <laughs> checking in, uh, checking in on the. Uh, checking in on the uh, the inevitable delivery of those plasma decoherence rifles, uh, getting some work done here on the space station. We've had some problems with a sentient, uh, the sentient Q38 species. We request uh, immediate aid uh, and bring lots, and I capitalize, lots of these plasma decoherence rifles. Nice. Please? Yeah. Please. <laughs> and like you get like dead silence on the other end for a second. And, and then you just start please to... respond. Yeah, it's like, who is this? What's your operating number? Please confirm. <laughs> yeah. And give give me a uh, guy. What are we gonna? 
to roll here. <laughs> I would say it's a defy danger probably with um, yeah. influence. Yeah, I guess I defy danger with influence. You know, you're getting like it. Okay. Oh, well, influence, you said? I three. did. Three. Big, <laughs> three. Big, big fat three. Oh, no. It's Vitro. Almost, Vitro, almost Vitro almost eight three four, two. Which is just really bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, what'd you say? And Vitor832, is that what you said? Yep. <laughs> now you're totally giving this guy your real name. Your real, yeah, your real I, designation. I'm not going to pretend I'm not uh, because it's my chip. They're going to, yeah. All right. So yeah. I'm, I'm, why lie? Right? I'm, I'm right. going to tell them exactly what yeah. I just read to these guys. And the great, well, the great thing is you realize that like this communication is coming through Ansible. So these people are nowhere near where you are. Okay. You know? But like the other guy's like, Vitor832, you went off the grid months ago. Yeah, they transferred me out here. Let's see. Yeah, about four months ago. Who am I talking to? Uh, this is Clodius596. Clodius, where are you at? What's the situation over there at the station? We haven't heard situation. anything for the last two weeks. Situation is, uh, well, as you know, MechTech's ever I'm on the spot. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we do need those weapons. We've had to shut down half of this station. This is highly irregular. Hold on. <laughs> yep. He just pulled a Han Solo. Situation's normal. Everything's fine here. How are you? We're all fine. And actually, you, know, you, start, you start to hear little hums, and you hear like, oh, oh, oh. And you, you can see, like, all of a sudden you hear these little servo motors, all these little, little, little uh, things, these little drones start to, like, fly out of the walls. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay. They got the little cameras and eyes on, and they got little lights blowing, you know. And you realize this is this is classic mech tech surveillance. Like this guy's like piloting a little remote drone, so you gotta find out what the hell's really and going I'll, on. Uh, I'll tell, smile everybody. Uh... I'll tell all my, Johanno, say hello to mech tech, Captain Tiberius, smile, wave, Beatrice. As you can see, Claudius, these are my friends here. They're the the few that are left to help me. Where is our help? Um. Uh... Vitor A32, please plug into terminal CXY for immediate download. We request CXY? a complete, yeah, and, and you know, what he's asking you to do at this particular point is to stick a wire in your head and completely download download everything that you know to him. Like, this is not something you really want. Yeah, sure. He's Absolutely. Really to... Absolutely. Takes the... one second. And I'll step back and I'll say, Beatrice, uh, blow this thing up. <laughs> and... Put a bullet in this thing. And she looks at you, and she just 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 blasts the terminal. Uh, and then uh, I'll point out the drones. Well, they know we're here. Maybe they'll send help. I'm like, more importantly, who gave Beatrice a gun? And I'm looking at you, Viator. <laughs> you know, I don't know. She's clever. She, 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 my, she, then you hear a scream. Oh no! From hey! And somebody flip me a D6. Give me odds or evens here. Uh, two. That is two. Okay. And you hear Dimitri scream. Oh, Dimitri no. was outside the room. <clears throat> and he's like, he's shouting, Johanna, help! And you can just hear the gun he has, the, the machine gun that he has, just yeah, blowing. Going off. Going off. Okay, quick question before I run off to him. Were yeah. there any other exits out of this room? Uh, there were not. Oh, great. <laughs> All right, so I'll say... Uh, uh, Stand by, we're coming. So I'll rush ahead and 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 try to see what is going on. I'd say, Johanna, wait, wait, as he tries to rush out. Um, and would you stop or would you keep going? I think I just keep going. Okay. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, come on, Play come on, out. let's back him up. You know, With Marco's behind you already. You know. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> okay, and I'll cock the you know the humongous gun that I have here, and I'm like, what are we doing? <clears throat> and then I would look to Viator, and I would say, "Can you find us any other way out of here?" Uh, yeah, generally there is a, uh, there's always a second, a, 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 a second maintenance entrance, um, and I'll look for that door uh, in this uh, facility, and I'll point to the uh, drones and remind everybody, uh, give them a good show. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, One of them has already like flown out the door, like following yeah. a hot scream, and, and I'm gonna pick up this bag of goodies, all these tools, like a little elf, <laughs> <laughs> these toys, 
um, and look for a door. Okay. <laughs> Let's look for a door. Let's see. How would you look for a door? Uh, you give, give me an assessment plus, uh, uh, gosh. Give me, give me, give, give me plus metal. Plus metal? Yourself a door. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a six minus one, so six. Seven minus okay. one. Okay. You're not finding the damn uh, you know <laughs> second exit place. Well, uh, this could be the, they could have... normally these union shops have multiple, uh, but obviously this this space station this must have been a this must have been a uh, computer a computer terminal only uh, access point. In the meantime, while you guys are having fits of bravery out in the hallway, <laughs> you know, you know, it's dark, but you but you see Dimitri like his his feet are off the floor. No, oh, no. And, and there's this large, kind of insectoid-looking thing. It's got to be about, got to be eight feet tall, eight nine feet tall. Um, has you know, you can't tell if it's got six or eight extremities. And you know, Dimitri is just kind of in the grips of this thing, like screaming his head off. It's kind of blackish, purplish, you know. And once again, you can't see really well because it is dark. Yeah. So, but I got lamps. I mean, I. I, yeah. I Flash briefly to the exit behind it. Yeah. See if we can get past. Uh, and if there's enough room, I'll just open up with a shotgun and start yelling. Uh, quick, we gotta get out of here. We're trapped in a in a dead end. And I'll just. Start. Right. Okay. Give me a. Uh, give me. You know what? Give me. Give me. Give me uh, for this. What do you need to call this? Your. Uh... Open fire? Open yeah, fire. open fire. Yeah, open fire. Yeah, plus my. Don't forget, I updated, upgraded your uh, weapon. Yeah, I was thinking of taking uh, recoil list because I didn't know if there was going to be uh, uh, gravity here. Uh, anyway, this this has burst on it, and uh, let, let's roll that. Okay, so that's a seven, but. Uh, I have a talent which says uh, when you open fire or ass or launch assault, you choose one or more consequences on a partial success. Right, right. Rather so than I that, choose okay. them instead of you. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, suffer harm, exchange causes undesirable collateral damage, <laughs> battle shifts, changing threats or adding new ones. Uh, targets actually suffered a lesser fate. So I th think this is what happened. So I see the thing and I start unloading on it and uh, I call for these guys to come over so they, they, they poke their heads out on the on the through the entrance and I say yeah, open fire, open fire, everybody uh, drive it back, drive it back. So we keep firing on it and I'm guessing that uh, uh, the captain's uh, uh, plasma weapon uh, actually does the most damage. So I think uh, we managed to drive the thing back. Uh, I think we kill it. Uh, and and we, we managed to make our way, managed to make our way uh, across to the exit. But... Uh, Dimitri, I think, dies in the process. Yeah, uh, and uh, <laughs> so he takes he takes the damage uh, from the thing. We we weren't able to. Um, right. Yeah. That's what yeah. That's nice. That sounds that sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people fire. Yeah. You can tell that this thing is taking damage from like a shotgun, taking damage from the mm -hmm. uh, the other weapons, but not as much. Like it just seems to be able to. You're not sure if some some of the stuff's bouncing off of it. Or or some of it is, or some of it's just you know it's just taking the slugs and and shaking them off. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the captain actually he actually manages to hit the thing with the, this this weapon one time. It is loud. Uh, this uh, this hand this hand cannon, and when it hits it, it, just like starts to glow on the inside, and there's like a large portion of the, the creature just kind of like shimmers, and the creature lets out this like ear piercing, it might be able to call it a scream. It just sounds more like a thousand nails on chalkboards and, you know, rise around and then stops moving. You know, Dimitri is, looks like he's just been slashed all get out. 
it's possible a couple of bullets might have hit him too. You're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I, looks, would, I would take I a moment um, yeah. for just a second, and I would uh, I would look at the gun, and I would look at the creature, and I'd be like, I like this gun, and then I go <laughs> right on the barrel, <laughs> even though it probably isn't smoking. Um, and then, but then I'm like, we got to get out of here. Yeah, I'll 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 go over to Dimitri and just make sure that he's he's you know he's not alive and confirm that he's dead, and I'll say uh, uh, rest in peace, brother. And I I grab I guess that maybe his armor has dog tag equivalent. And yeah. I'll grab that and take it with me. I'll say keep moving, keep moving. We gotta get to the ship. There might be more of these things. We're gonna leave him here. And so, you know, Marco's, like, objecting. Is he going to leave him here, man, like a dog? All right, you carry him. Uh, but let's go. Carry him? Oh, we'll leave him here. Never mind. Dragging my bag. That's what I thought you said, yeah. Uh, I want to go over and, and, and look at this creature and see if I can assess if it is, uh, if it is actually bio... Uh, uh, it, you know, if it's mechanical or a mix, bio... I mean, is it actually biological creature or a mechanical slash biological creature? Yeah, you don't even need to roll for this. It's it definitely looks like it's 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 biological. It looks like some kind of highly evolved uh, insect form of life. Okay. Um, or some analog to insect form of life. It, it is big. I mean, you look you look at this thing and you realize this thing has got to weigh something like four hundred pounds. Okay. Um, it's got an exoskeleton. Um, you know, it, it's got to be. You know, it's it's tough because it doesn't walk completely upright. You know, it kind of almost has like that kind of praying mantis sort of thing going on, where it kind of trails behind itself a little bit, that thorax or whatever, or yeah, abdomen. But it is it is big. It's it's got uh, it's got six appendages, and uh, they all look like they could act as legs or or some analog to hands. But you know, just just looking at them and, and the the mouthpieces, it looks like one of these could take a person apart pretty easily. Okay. Um, and I, I, you know, I don't say anything to them. I'm satisfying my curiosity. No. The uh, the wound is pretty amazing though, because it just, you know, um, you know, Vitor didn't see it, but just it's incredible burn, you know, burn marks on this thing. But there's just a big chunk of the body just flat out missing. Okay. Not splattered somewhere, just missing. Right. Yeah. You know, everybody else saw a slug hit this thing, and then, you know, some kind of reaction happened, and uh, you know, big big chunk of its body. Uh, uh, dematerialized yeah that is not something that you know you've ever heard of yeah and like on that note as viator is sort of examining this thing uh i would come up next to him and you you would be able to tell like i'm, I'm kind of shaking at this point a little bit um maybe from the combat reflexes and whatever but uh or this you know this just the adrenaline and i'm like we we gotta go man but is is this something that that elsor was working on did they find this here what do you know anything uh i don't but the chip in my head does if if there is anything that it collects data that i'm not even privy to and i would definitely look like try to really catch viator's eye and i would say <laughs> I don't know if we can sell that sh that chip now. I don't know if we can we can let that go, but if we do, this changes everything. Yes. I wish this was mechanical. I could use parts of this. <laughs> oh well. So do I. Might make a nice hat, but in the meantime, <laughs> let's go. And is Beatrice is, is she reacting at her all or is she just kind of just She's pretty freaked out. Yeah, you know. going with the flow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's not no more freaked out. I mean, she doesn't seem to be freaked out. Never seen any combat or whatnot, yeah. but she's just like more like a holy crap. Yeah, what and, was that thing? Yeah, yeah, and she's just also like, where did you get that gun? <laughs> yeah, You're like yeah, it's a nice he, gun. He took it off me, sweetheart. Don't forget that. Why didn't you give me that gun? <laughs> I tried. He took it away from me. It's like, I'm not the hell out of here. it's like, I'm not comfortable with you having a gun, but the circumstances being what they are, let's just go. Anyway, don't worry. Don't worry, Beatrice. There's more guns like that back on the ship. Yeah. Will I think what we really see? need now is as some... Is it guns? Is that what turns you on, Beatrice? I got a lot of guns back on the ship. 
You get more guns like that? Oh, yeah. Lots of guns like that. Goes, this could be, could be my lucky gave, day. Don't forget who gave you that gun. I'm like, Vitor. What? Yeah, en yeah. Enough talking about our illicit cargo that we don't officially have. We got to go. We don't want to run into any more of these things. All right. All right. I'll pick up my bag. Lead the way. So it's 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 you're, obvious. You're gonna have you know, to lead the way. You got the only gun that can kill these. It's obvious from 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 uh, from station um, uh, schematics and layouts where the the ship is docked, where it's refueling at yep. this particular point. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and at this uh, point, I, I at this point, I think I think probably there should be another boldy go roll by ooh. by Johanno. But uh, well, let's just say let's let's give it some stakes. You know. <laughs> Maybe, well, well, before, we'll maybe before he does that, I would I would like hand this this pistol over to him, and I said, maybe uh -huh. uh, maybe you'd be better off having this. Can we can we trade? Uh, yeah, it seems to be doing much better. So uh, I hand him the the shotgun. Yeah, I mean that's quite clearly the captain's cowardice, uh, you know, <laughs> showing. You know, I don't want to go first. Coming into play. Yep. Uh, so you want me to roll boldly go again? Addition into the unknown. Okay. Yeah, I figure why not. Sure. So, uh, it's plus metal, so plus one. Here we go. Eight plus two is ten. Yes. Oof. So okay. I choose one. Uh, let's see. You encounter something potentially profitable, something currently useful, or something uniquely awesome. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, uniquely awesome. I say also, profitable. Yeah, so it's looking like something profitable. Uh, let's see. Uh, station terraforming Tony planet insect. Um, I think we stumble onto another lab uh, uh, of the terraforming uh planet and they got mineral samples of uh, the surface that they're working on to to fine tune the uh, the uh, microbiology flora that they're trying to inject into this ecosystem to make it more earth-like and as part of the uh, mineral samples there are va valuable uh, minerals in there so maybe I don't know if that gemstones or some rare uh, metals that uh, Vitor immediately knows to be uh, valuable. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can. You can. You. That definitely seems like a, a plausible thing, as well as some, like some mm -hmm. cutting edge, like microbes. So you realize this is stuff that's not currently, you know, and this stuff may in fact be new. Nice. To this particular area. Are there any hand trucks around? <laughs> Hand trucks? Yeah. yeah, I mean you can you can find some to like to load. Okay, I'm gonna set my bag of tools on it and I'm gonna <laughs> roll it over and say, load it up. We got room in the cargo bay. <laughs> yeah, I think we would. I think we would start helping. Yeah, I, I mean, start, we're, we're still in uh, business. We're, we might be we might yeah. be uh, in danger. But, we might you know, be moving fast. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're so I'll load, I'll, I'll, we'll ball. load this yeah. up and then I'll uh, get all my weight behind it and I'll push these leaders here. Nice. Right. And so far, you've you've gone past uh, once again. You've gone past several more uh, signs of like struggle. There's areas where like I mean, systems have actually mechanical systems have actually been destroyed. Uh, you you run across some more bodies, some horribly horribly mangled. You actually you actually come across at least two carcasses of these creatures, uh, one of which is remarkably smaller. Then the other one seems to be slightly different form. The other one is the same kind of size. And uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I definitely want to look to see uh, if they don't have plasma weapons, how did they take these out? Can I tell? Um, it looks it looks like, uh, you know, one of them just like got a hell of a lot of bullet fire into it. Like, probably, probably a grenade or something actually exploded okay. inside one of them. But uh, it looks like, you know, on closer uh, examination, especially of the bigger one, it looks like they hit it like... Time. Okay. 
like yeah. you know, a lot, you know, hail of. We just don't have enough firepower for these things. Yeah. So bullets still work. It's just the plasma is easier. No. Um, you also see some pretty bizarre um, scarring on parts of the ship, and a couple couple of human bodies, which look like they've just been almost kind of like burned away. You're not sure what they got hit by, huh. but it wasn't bullets. Whatever it was, it was probably associated with that creature. But uh, should we? Mm. Um, we should probably keep moving, huh? Yep. Let's get back to the ship. I'm definitely like twitching at this point. Like and, and, yeah. at this point, I'm trying to trot with the hand truck. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, I might even jump up like you do at the shopping. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're out buying groceries and kind of ride it a little bit. And then, yep. Right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Rapido, rapido, we must get to the ship. Yeah. And so finally, you, you start to, you finally get to the part where you realize your fueling, you know, uh, docking station would be at this point. And the ship's docked. Everything looks pretty good. Um, there are about four of these creatures between you and actually where the ship is. Wow. So, uh... I and mean, there's an airlock dock there. It's, it hasn't, has, it doesn't look like it's or anything. Yeah, so um, say... two, of them, two of them are like about human size. The other two are about the size, you know, that you saw before, about, about nine feet tall, you know. So I'll say, take cover, take cover. And we dock down uh, behind some crates. Or at least Johanna docks down behind some Mm -hmm. Captain, are you, are you here yet? Are you here yet? We're, we're almost ready. We're just about fueled. You can hear this kind of broadcasting in your ears, and you realize, oh my god, well, at least it's not broadcasting outside our suits. Mm -hmm. But there's that moment where you jump, like... Mm -hmm. Cooper, it's Johanno. Uh, stand by. There are four uh, dangerous creatures outside the ship. Uh... uh relay this to the rest of the crew inside uh, have them uh, gather plasma weapons from the from the crates uh, uh, we're going to need to uh, open fire uh, in a coordinated assault um, uh, watch for us we're across the the uh, entrance bay uh, make sure you don't hit us in the crossfire but have them draw the weapons and stand by for my signal uh, to open the hatch and we'll open fire. We'll start fire first, draw their attention, and then we need you to come in and reinforce us. Uh, let me know when the uh, crew has gathered the weapons and is ready for us to begin the assault. And he says, I I'm sorry, Johanna. I, I thought I my, my ear com must not be working really well. Could you repeat that? I thought you said that we were supposed to get into a a firefight with these? Oh, God. Listen, this is the only way we can get back to the ship. Uh, we need to clear the path. We got the tools that fighter needs for. We got a little something extra. Well, yeah, you got a little something first. extra. I think, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got a little something extra. And he, like, I know. And you see him flick. It's like, oh, my God, what the hell are those things? And you realize he's turned on the exterior cameras. Yeah. And at, th at this point, hearing this whole thing, I would say, Cooper, this is not a suggestion. This is an order. Send out Johanno's men with those guns and we'll coordinate the assault with him. Got it? Oh, God, have mercy. I never should have had sex with that woman. <laughs> Got it. And yeah, so, uh, if, if this were Star Trek, what is it? Ferengi rules of acquisition, 120-something, never yeah. sleep with boss's wife. Right, right, it's exactly. Boss's exactly. daughter or something, yeah. It's after about, about 10 grueling, uh, nail-biting minutes, you, know, you realize these creatures have not detected your presence. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you hear, like, a signal. Yeah, we've, we've, you hear a, actually hear a monkey say, yeah, we're ready. Yeah, what do so you want us to do? Uh, stand by. I'm going to start uh, the assault. Once those, we draw the creature's attention, I'll give the signal, open the hatch, and uh, uh, and back us up. Kill, uh, kill the big ones as po if possible. Um, 
So all right, boss. Yeah. So I'll I'll signal to the rest to be ready, and then you know when everybody's ready, I'll jump out and start drawing fire and sort of moving sideways uh, to try and catch these things in a crossfire. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I start moving out, I'll I'll you know once once they're looking my way, I'm shooting. That's when I give the signal for the hatch, and so they can. Okay, so what do you what do you really? Like, I'm going to kind of divide this through a bit. So, like, what are you first trying to do when you're first starting to to, uh, to open fire on these creatures? What's your What's your uh, actual intention? Uh, I just want to draw their attention so they're not looking at the ship because the last thing in the world I want is for the hatch to open and the creatures rush into the ship. So, right, uh, maybe distract them a bit so that the other guys have a chance of catching them unawares. Yeah, okay, then the roll plus metal. Now, wait. Go ahead. Um, Does anybody I, else wants to do something? Yeah, go right ahead. Can I get involved and uh, use my data point to help get their attention? Ooh. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna be able to... You're going to prevent some creatures would... would, would uh, yeah. I mean, would really I, find particularly tasty or good. <laughs> or otherwise. I feel it's pretty, pretty important we get their attention. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll plus metal. Here we go. Ouch! Five plus one is six. Okay, let's well then go. let's see let's see let's see how the the, the Vitor is able to assist you. Uh, uh, what now for getting their attention? We're using influence. Um, that's I think well you, well you were just actually assisting, so I'm I'm looking for the assistance. Getting involved. Because, I mean, I, I, I think it depends on what on how you're getting involved. Like, what are you right. actually going to do? I'm, to try I'm to... yelling and screaming, and I'm I'm running with this cart. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The way he described it, he's shooting and moving, yeah. and so I would be running with a cart, yelling and, and making as much noise as I could. So I have okay. expertise. Or, See, uh, I, I think that yeah. would be metal because that would take a yeah, bunch just, of cojones to be able to that's run balls. out there. Yeah, uh, and, I, and I'm going to use this data point, so I add that to this roll, correct? Yeah, you, you're just you're, yeah, and let's just say you just know how to act in the most like you you you're, you're acting like a lure. <laughs> eight, eight, total. Okay. Eight. All right, so that bumps. So it's, it up. it's fine. Is, uh, it just pushes him up from a failure to a partial success. success. Right. Yes. Okay. So absolutely. So the so what happens is like you know he's he he's getting their attention. It's not a hundred percent working because the creatures are still looking at the ship. They're still. You come out there with this car, just you're rattling out there like whoa. You get their attention completely. Uh, you get their attention, attention a little bit, a little yeah. bit too much, a little bit too much. <laughs> and one of the small ones has actually gotten to Vitor and has like picked him off the cart. You take one, you take one damage. You take but, them. But I am yeah. holding on to this cart with that other. Oh, arm. absolutely, absolutely. Okay, you're holding the cart. I mean, it's, <laughs> he's got me. I got this. He ain't getting this cart from me. I'm, a point of damage? You yeah, yeah so like I, a, your 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 my, the first injury. You minor know, um, minor injury. Yep. Minor injury. So this thing's got you like in a claw. It's incredibly strong. And it's moved incredibly fast. Okay. But it's like kind of clamped on your leg, so your leg is like out off the air. You're got you're holding onto the cart with the other. Hand. <laughs> it's holding with a hand, and the <laughs> leg is. <laughs> Flying around, but you have their complete undivided attention. The okay. big ones are also kind of moving towards Vitor as well. <laughs> you know, yeah. so at this open, particular point, open and, fire yeah. and start, you know, yelling for the guys on the ship to. And Captain, to... what are you, what are you doing at this point? So I am sort of. Uh, I think at this point, I'm I'm just firing the shotgun, just trying to do whatever I can, and I'm standing like really close to Beatrice because I don't want her to necessarily like do anything crazy. Um, but yeah, I think I would just be trying to maneuver my way closer to the ship if I could. And then when I see Vitor kind of in the clutches of this thing, um, I, I, I'm trying to figure out a way that I can get him out of this. Like maybe I, I know his whole thing was a distraction. And so I think, I think what I would do then in this case is I, I, I look to Beatrice and I'm like, we got to get Vitor out of there. And I don't know if she would, if she would hesitate or not, but I would literally like take the shotgun and push and just shove her right towards these beasts, hoping that I have enough strength <laughs> to, uh, you know, that she'll sprawl and then yeah. maybe they'll go for her instead of, you know, instead wow. of meanwhile, I think I'm going to die because this thing's tearing my leg. Yeah. And I, you hear me yell, I love you. <laughs> so you, 
You you pushed Beatrice towards the creatures as bait. Is that that's your actual? Yeah, yeah, action? just like Bruh! yeah, just shoved her. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're all go good. Roll roll me some plus uh, plus the uh, physique or physique, physique yeah. yeah. Oh god. <laughs> all right, so nine. Ooh, nice. Well, uh, I yes. think the, I think the good news here is that Vider has any petition for Beatrice's attention as far as the captain is concerned that he's no longer a possible competition oh, yeah. to you so don't worry about it <laughs> no i went from captain kirk to captain mal i'm not i'm not uh yeah so you push her you push her but it's a, it's a nine so you push her um push her successfully she's now sprawling down you know where where the other creatures are um uh, one of the one of the one of the uh, the smaller creatures is actually uh, the coming towards her now. To uh, the 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 one that's got Vitor, you really have not. She has got the pistol in her hand and she's firing it, but she's firing at you. No, <laughs> she's a tr- gonna try to fire at me. Okay. Yeah, she's she's she's, she's, well, she's a little mad. Yeah. It's like you and you're just, you son of a bitch. <laughs> pow pow pow! She doesn't hit you, but like the bolts the bolts are flying right past you. Mm. The, the, the the airlock bursts open. And and you know monkey you know one eye, uh, chainsaw eyes are coming out and they're just blasting these freaking plasma weapons over the place. When they're missing the creatures, it's just like hitting parts of the wall. The parts of the wall are kind of you know um, shimmering a little bit. It just it causes more like burns, but they, they start to hit the creatures. Vitor, yeah. the creature that gets you like you almost get hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to hit that creature too to help Vitor. And I, I think maybe like as I was doing that, I ran. Um, I was trying to like get out of the way of the bullet fire, and I get right up close to the creature that's holding Vitor. And realizing this, and just being like terrified, I think I would almost unintentionally shoot the shotgun like right up at the appendage that's holding Vitor. Um, j- you know, trying to get him out of here, but also almost like a panic fire. <laughs> Right. Yeah, just spray a pick around you, but like the chitin. It's amazing like how strong these limbs act are even just taking a shotgun blast. Yeah, yeah. Do you need me to roll anything or just uh let's see. I think all of you should learn roll just like a face adversity roll with, you know, like uh at this point, you know, either metal or physique. I'd say Bytor would probably take physique at this point, seeing as he's there. <laughs> Eight nine for me. <laughs> a three. Nine uh, for me. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a plus one. Nine for me is. Okay. Set of nines all across the. Uh... Oh, no. Three for Captain. I got a three. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, so, you know, like, it, it is it's a bit of a pitched battle. So more of these creatures actually appear. Um, so there's about three or four more that, that show up. It's it's tough to really figure out, like, how many actually showed up. The the plasma rifles tend to, tend to bring them down. Um, over time, none of you, you know, uh, only one of you actually has one. Um, Vitor, you get shaken up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, actually, actually, yeah, yeah, well, you actually take another, 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 um, Johanno, um, actually ends up getting wounded. Just taking, okay. taking, taking a minor, a minor wound. Um, the good news is Tiberius does not take any, any damage from the creatures. The bad news is he does get shot in the shoulder. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, Beatrice manages to actually wing him. Okay. <laughs> it's not even the monsters. It's Beatrice. Yeah. What, uh, <laughs> w- sorry, I don't have that part of the sheet. What's the next one up? Moderate injury? I think it's moderate, I have, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, actually, it says here minor, oh, major, 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 severe, major. critical, fatal. I have major. Okay. Major, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You guys have been banged up, but, you know. Nice. And then I would be like, ah. <laughs> but is it, do we have a clear, um, passage to the ship at this point yeah 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 you have a clear passage to the ship at that point All um right. you can hear you can hear sounds as if, as if there are things coming but like they're they're not there yet so you're actually able to, able to clamber on the ship with your stuff with with the with the goods with the tools um you know at this point cooper's like come on come on we're, we're fuel good and, and uh, uh so i'll roll this cart in let it go into the cargo bay dragging my uh leg which is severely wounded major wound and i and i'll stand at the the back of the ship and motion beatrice come on beatrice run yeah and i think i would stand right there with him making sure you know everybody get on the ship get on the ship <laughs> and everybody comes on the ship the airlock kind of like you know slides 
Well, uh, hold on. Does, does Beatrice actually get up? Like, is she coming? Oh, she, yeah, she, she shows up. Shows up yeah. So I think as she's getting there, I would kind of, I would look over to Vitor and I think we would have this moment. And then um, I, I think I, it, unless he tries to stop me, I'm going to, I'm not, I'm going to try to not let her on the ship. Oh, but if he does want to stop me, I'm not going to like resist or whatever. I, so I thought you were going to say, this is why we didn't want to give her guns, but exactly. <laughs> but no, I will. I will try to stop her from getting on the ship. I would, I would probably be because I'm wounded and in shock. I probably, it, it would take me, I would, it would delay my response. Uh, so if he wants, if he pushes okay. her off, I wouldn't really be able to do anything about it. Yeah. Right. So the airlock, airlock, airlock goes. And you just you could see her. It was yeah, like... I see her face as, as it closes, and I look at Tiberius. Capitano, Johanna says, you're not letting her on board. I say, and then then you know, she's turning. She's no longer looking at you, firing this weapon over and over again. And it only take you, know, you can see this 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 huge tree come by, and it grabs her. There's like a splatter of blood against the. Oh. the Viator's trying to jump up and see out the little window. Like, so you can see this happen. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, she's gone. Let's go. And uh, uh, I'll stand at the back with my hands on the the back door, uh, a bloody, uh, thinking what could have been. <laughs> and I think I would he's run up his, to the. He's got his yeah. head on the. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, like, the uh, no! with a hat pushed back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and I, I would probably run up to the bridge, you know, get in the cockpit and try to just book it out of there as fast as possible. Nice. Right. And uh yeah, you you have come there is there is some ship approaching, which is like no ship you've ever seen before. Ooh. And I think I would get on the comms and I say Ship approaching. I think it's time for another wild jump. <laughs> That's us, man. What the hell are you talking about, man? That's like, you know, you know so, uh, is going out of his mind. Like, what are you talking uh, about? Another wild jump. I, I think that way? right before the captain hits the wild jump, like, throws the switch, uh, Johanna says, wait, uh, who's watching Wheeler? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Captain B, as 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 as, as, we, as we fade to black here, let's, why don't why don't we just roll the results? Let's just roll the wild jump, Captain. Let's see what we need to deal with next time. Um, if it's just a straight roll, I got a seven. Same, oh, okay. same, deal. That's same, us, same thing. <laughs> and okay. I think we'll I think we'll call it right here. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Great oh, job. man. And we'll see. You know, we'll see. You know, and we'll, we'll have to decide. Like, do do we want to use this system next time, or do we want to use something like Genesis next time and, and see, you know, how uh, how it feels differently? But yeah, that was uh, there's some great moments during that. Yeah, yeah. that uh, that played a lot more naturally. We just uh, we just played, you know, and yeah. we followed what, you know, trigger moves and yeah. I think we did. I think we did it right. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think we did fine. Like you know, I, I tried to make... still trying to still trying to figure out like with the. <clears throat> You know, it wasn't like a real giant combat, but I, I, I think the idea, or at least what, what makes most sense to me, is to kind of divide the threats up a little bit. Like, you know, when I'm like asking, like, what do you want to do, rather than just roll, make one roll and say, yeah, we beat all the guys, we beat all right. the monsters. It's like, okay, what are you trying to do? Well, I'm trying to draw their attention. Yeah, that's I think the way the system, and and actually there's um, I think there's a video that Sean Gomes did about combat mm -hmm. where, where he describes yeah. that he it's a procedure, mm -hmm. so it's. It's, you know, where in D&D &D you roll multiple times until you take the monster down. This is, you roll, you're successful, now let's break it into chunks. So the first part of this, what do you do? Right. Then oh, no, I, I get it. Do, yeah. I get yeah. it. But I mean, so. but also he talks about in the book, it's like, make, let's make something a threat. So, I mean, yep. you can you can say, decide, okay, well, the threat this time is get their attention. Yeah, yeah. It's sure. not the whole thing. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. and then the next threat might be like, you know, just let's the incapacitate this one to get to, from point A to point B. Right. So you, you can, you can yeah. divide up any, any way you want to. So you can kind of make it granular if you want to. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. And but but the, uh, you know, so, uh, I, I love the like, the running full, the assist move, just like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. great. Vitor's <laughs> great. Vitor's great. 
Yeah. Vitor realizes like, that they, they, they can't resist a lot of noise. You know, he, he figures yeah. out like what really attracts them. And like, 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 like bass to a crankbait. Like bass to a crankbait. And it's like, but of course, you roll the complication. Of course, what's the complication going to be? Well, yeah, they really like you. Yeah, that's yep. it. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, uh, it felt a, like it felt a lot better this time. But that's because we're more relaxed. Read the uh, book more, and we just played like uh, I think I think we followed it fairly well. I think Genesis would be an interesting uh, yeah. go with this. Yeah, right? I'm all about. Uh, however, that however, I've, we've played Star Wars. I think we know how smooth that system is. So it isn't like that would be a that wouldn't be so much of an experiment as that would be just balls out playing. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, I, I wonder. I wonder. I would wonder, like, how these characters would they feel different, you know, or would would the experience feel different? No, I, you know, I role play. I, I role play a character as it's. Uh, um, now, obviously, you utilize and activate what's relevant to the mechanics, but mm -hmm. uh, Viator's uh, personality wouldn't change unless the game, right. unless there's something mechanically missing from Genesis that would be necessary for me to play this this mechanic, but. No, I mean, I think the difference would be that we would have story points and we would have, obviously, the dice results, whether they are... Because um, mm -hmm. I think the thing that's interesting about this system is that on a 7 through 9, generally it's the GM that's really coming up with mm -hmm. all of this stuff, where with Genesis or FFG Star Wars, it, it kind of... It's back and forth, right? There's a lot more sort of... Um, you know, the players get to come up with a lot more on the successes, and the, obviously the GM handles the threats and whatever, but... Uh, so I, it would be very interesting to see. I think it would be really fun to try it in Genesis and see. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. plus uh, I want I want to be able to play the doctor. The, the doctor is yeah. my. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm most interested in Genesis because it is the yeah. generic version of uh, oh, yeah. NES. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I could run that. You know, I've been running Star Wars or, or Sam, whatever, whoever feels. Yeah. Oh, I could run it because Sam never gets to play, right? Right. Sam is always the yeah. Star Wars GM, so. I mean, what uh, we have to have the captain, don't we? Well, the captain. Sure. The thing is, the captain is still like. I mean, is an is well, no, he's an NPC. You know, that's, well, that's the thing. Oh, well, right. and also being a major injury. I mean, you know, it's feasible that I would be getting ugh, the, the ministrations of the doctor. Yeah, you <laughs> know, who might who may take his sweet time because you punched. Yeah, because twice. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, don't worry, Doc. I know where to get Cuban cigars. Yeah. Don't sweat it, Dr. Wheeler. You take care of me, I'll get you some Cuban cigars. Yeah, for Although, sure. I have a contact. Although, yeah, my, my, um, probably one of my favorite moments was you, you start to get more and more of a, as you get to know the characters more, you get to realize, like, uh, Tiberius's personality, that he's just, like, literally willing to just, <laughs> this woman is, this woman is a detriment, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. Yeah, I I was thinking about it because I, I was trying to figure out like who, you know, who he's becoming. And I feel like this situation with these these aliens and like this is beyond dangerous for us at this point. And all he wants is to be free. And I'm like, nope, that lady tying us to a gangster. I'm not taking that chance. Like we're getting out of here. Yeah. So that was crazy. But um, I'm I'm curious to to know what you guys think about uh do, do you feel like this played more like a traditional like you could like we could have played this in White Star and it would have you know it would have been no no White Star is incredibly lethal. Well, yeah, sure, that's true. Okay, oh, the lethality part of it, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. but um. And because it is OD and D, it's OSR. Yeah. There's no skill. There is right. no. Well, some of the classes have a few skills. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, uh, White Box. These versions of White Box, uh, not White Box itself, but these versions, yeah. the classes do have skills you can draw on. Right. right? Yeah. So yeah, you have the mechanic or the robot droid or. Yep. So in that sense, yeah, you Biocore could have activated some of these skills in as a class, right? Yeah. Um. I guess more in terms of like play style. I think that's what I said when I, yeah. I made my video about this the first time. I, I feel this. I feel the procedure of this is very much oh, yeah. uh, D twenty. Yeah. Uh, the difference is we don't need binary results. Um, the right. results aren't binary. That's the difference. Let's not right. tear ourselves. We if we took die twenty. Yeah. We said okay, one to ten is this. 
our one to eight is this, and from a, a, from nine to twelve is partial, and right. from thirteen up. I mean, all we're doing is making a non-binary yeah. decision. Yeah, that's correct. That's, correct. that's it. It's mm-hmm. all we've done. We went from yes or no to yeah. There's some wiggle room here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, and think... we have a little more control of the narrative. Right. right. Well, the description of the results. Right. Yeah. I think these PBTA games have two things going on. One is the uh, improvisation in the terms of uh, GM asking questions, like not having things. And yeah. that is system agnostic. You can right. play Star mm-hmm. Wars doing that. You can play mm-hmm. OD&D and mm-hmm. just say, what's in here? What does this look like? And, Absolutely, you know, I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's completely unlinked from the actual die rolling soon and the, what the die rolling does is it gives you the prompt to the prompts to keep the the thing chugging along right it keeps mm-hmm. the, the motor the wheel spinning without the gm having to do all of the heavy coming up mm-hmm. stuff yep. which yeah. the star wars dies we know we do, they do mm-hmm. so if you uncouple the uh First aspect of just asking questions to 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 spread the uh, the workload, so to speak, and just focus on what the dice do, the the, the yeah. actual two d six. That part can be completely substituted by Star Wars, and and you would never, yeah, mm-hmm. you you wouldn't right. miss one over the other. I don't think mm-hmm. it's just right. simpler. Yeah. Like you can, if you don't want to do the combat, yeah, just roll the two dice and uh, right. the combat's over. Yeah, and I, I consciously made a decision, you know, this time to like, I mean, I, I didn't play as entirely rules as written because I didn't ask you as many questions. I want to say, well, what is this going to feel like if right. if we just if I roll it more like, yeah, you know, like a a, a, a tra- well tradition. I have to say traditional game, but do that, but still yeah. just yeah. kind of use the seven to nine thing that way. Like, would it feel still PBTA? Because there there's one of the games like a PBTA bundle, I think it was Spirit of Seventy Seven, which says. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is really true. I'm not sure if you're really playing PBTA at this point, but it's it, it said, you know, if you don't remember anything else, just remember that, you know, six six minus that's a failure, make something bad happen. Seven to nine is they succeed, but in, in, you know, give them a cost, and and ten up they succeed. And you know, we did that. They want. Yeah, and we so, did uh, that the whole game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I try, I try I I just try to use that as my major, yep, guideline, yeah. and then and then and then have that guy line up, you know. Um, when I have to make a move, like do I do I make something? Uh, do I announce future badness? You know, like where the ship is. Obviously, like oh crap, we're, you, know, whatever, you know, whatever kind of vibe he wants to. Get. Right. If you use the Star Wars dice, you'll just get that same information but more detailed. Right. If you use OSR, you will probably do the exact same thing but without prompts. Right. It'll be like, hmm, what's cool to throw in here? And you just throw it, right? Which is what we've been doing always. So I think those are like three uh, gradations, like three uh, variations on a theme. Yeah. Right? It doesn't, it's not that alien a thing, you know? Yeah. It's on no, a spectrum. And I, and I actually yeah. felt Star Wars felt more OSR than this did. I I, I mean, I did. Yeah. yeah. The, the only difference is we get so much information from the diet. It's, but, it's more prompting. But, yeah. I mean, if we just break down the mechanics, because that's role plays, role play. Let's just break down right. the mechanics. What do we get? We declare an action. The GM says, okay, roll to hit AC, roll to do a save, roll to dex under. Okay. What do we get? We get the result, but it's binary. Yes, no. That's all. Mm-hmm. Right. In Star Wars, same process is happening, but now the mm-hmm. dice give us all kinds of information. So our result is multi-dimensional. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's still the same process. Yes. Exact same gaming process. Yes. This gaming process is a little different, but mm-hmm. um, in, in mm-hmm. the fact that we really we really do in a way a coded activation of what we want to do versus the one ring, which I'm reading says no. The players declare what they want to do, they pick the skill they want to roll, they roll the dice. Mm-hmm. And right, the GM right stands there and says well now but you have to identify what you're doing what you got and and then what you're going to use to do that and then you have to tell us if you pass what does that mean and then narrate that if you do this yeah. kind of codes it hides it mm-hmm. does that make sense i think so i can say i'm yeah. going to access the computer yeah 
I, uh, and then the G that should cue the GM to say, that's a move. Yeah. Okay. Instead of just flat saying, I'm going to log onto the computer. My goal here is to use computers and I want to get this information. And I roll the yeah. dice and I say, I succeeded. And this is what this is. Uh, now I don't know the mystery, so I need Ivan to tell me that information. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, I could, I could have, I could have been uh, decided at, at that point too, to just say, okay, what did you find out? Right. 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 Like I was, I was, I was See, making a conscious decision problem. to kind of play it a little bit more like old but, school. Like, let me tell you, but I, yeah, I could have. I, I, but that is a problem because I can't change the nature of what this space station is about. Wait, that's where that's where I start inventing a truth that isn't in the game. If I'm not, we're not there. So the way they play this, this is meant to be like pick up play. Like we're not doing anything. And two seconds before mm -hmm. we, we meet up and no game tonight. Yeah. No, okay, let's just draw this and start playing. No plan, mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. idea what's going on. And then it's a whole improv game. And right, you yeah. say, wait, the, there's no alien creature. It's actually a machine. And Ivan was thinking alien creature all the way, but now he's mm -hmm. like, he's got to roll with right. it. Oh so yeah, so that's game. Yeah, because okay, I mean, so I was I was yeah. doing improv. So like, I didn't sense, know it was on the station either. I was just making it up anyway. But I right. could have I could have just said, hey, you know what? Rather than me make up this this result, you make right. it up. Yeah, but that was wanna... that was the key I was trying to get at because it was funny okay. because for me that's how I'm used to playing PBTA. But I it was so it was really interesting playing it this way. I kind of liked it because I was like, whoa, this is sort of like the more traditional experience that I'm used to, but with, in my opinion, a better dice result, you know? Yeah. Um, simple, very yeah. simple. But yeah, but I'm I'm much more used mm -hmm. to the, um, oh, these creatures show up and, mm -hmm. you know, the, like, what are they? Or, you know, yeah. or, mm -hmm. oh, it's these bug creatures, but what is, you know, what do you mm -hmm. notice about them that, that makes them especially dangerous? And then we mm -hmm. have to go and basically screw right. ourselves, yeah. you know? But right. this is, yeah. this is why I say that this is the part of the game that you can actually yeah. uncover from the 2d6 yeah. roll you yeah. can you can do it. star wars totally. okay yeah you yeah, yeah. Computer, yeah what's in it yeah and then sure. just of course yeah of course. but yeah. again that's that's where though i feel it turns into writer's room if we're not mm -hmm. careful correct correct yeah, you, gotta, you gotta play with you gotta play with mature people i don't mind imparting right. something but writer's room gaming for me is it's difficult to watch it's difficult to be a part of yeah <laughs> because that's where viator sat in the last session and patiently waited for you guys to write that scene. Yeah. I felt I couldn't interject because I don't. I'm not in this writer room scene. Oh, okay. So that Interesting. that's a real hang up for me. But that right. that's something you can learn, of course. But one of the reasons I sat back is okay. I, I perceived this when I read the rules. That there's a this is a writer's room type thing. You're going to yeah. create this. Ivan's going to Ivan's going to uh, not Ivan himself, but the GM right. is going to allow exactly. this process to happen by asking yeah. questions, which Sam has talked about. Before. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and that's I think that's the key to it, right? If you pay, if you play uh, how we usually play, a traditional thing, uh, you are count. You could play a completely improvisational game. This is how Sam plays Star Wars. Right. You you he improvises everything, but it's just Sam improvising. Right. In this thing, it outsources the GM yeah. to whoever. It's like, right. okay, somebody improvise something, yep. and somebody throws the stuff, and you keep playing. Mm -hmm. And I, I prefer, yeah, one guy improvising, and we just get the results. But hey, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, and that, so that was funny because you know, for a minute, I was like, I, I had to shift. Like, I almost imagine I had in this this session what Jason felt in the first session because. Mm -hmm. I was so I'm used to PBTA in a different way, and so and and it wasn't bad at all. I liked no, the session no, a lot, right. but yeah, it was I, it was interesting, yeah, it, yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa, this is a lot different than I was expecting. But then what I was able to do um, was, you know, kind of okay. Now this is how I play this session, mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. funny because that happened to me with a Fate game that I played too, where like I was expecting that we were gonna play Fate. And we weren't, we were playing, we were just role playing and we used a little bit of the fate mechanics. And so probably playing fudge. Yeah, sort of. But yeah. it was funny because it was like for the first maybe 10 minutes of that game, I was totally like, this is weird. Like I felt so uncomfortable. And then I just like relaxed and I was like, all right, now I know what we're doing. And so that was neat. It was sort of like, it's cool to see how you can use a system mm -hmm. kind of in any way you want. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as, yeah. as a GM, it was, yeah. it was kind of interesting because 
Beatrice literally did not exist until Johanna rolled a right. a, a weak hit in, yeah. in his in his uh, searching the ship, and then I realized, well, what's the complication going to be? I'm like, okay, well, the complication is they find somebody still there. Yeah, I guess I guess it's going to be a woman because that's going to be interesting. And you know, and then uh, you know, and, and you know, made her into what I thought was a really interesting character. Yeah. And Captain killed her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, well, and, and, I, you know, I got this today in the mail. I ordered this. This is uh, this is a a four against darkness. This is a solitaire yeah. or cooperative dungeon crawl RPG. Right. Right. Wow. And same concept. It's all random. You just roll yeah. a die. Oh look, there's gotcha. Beatrice. She just showed up in our game. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the danger of that, of course is uh not danger but that's the that's part of the difference of being informed by the dice right right so i think that's the real difference between what we call traditional pbta is who improvises the stuff right you know? is the source just one guy or right. is it the entire group mm-hmm. yeah and i think that's it i mean that's i think that's the bottom line that's your real exciting factor because this game felt much more traditional because mm-hmm. Ivan was doing the uh, heavy lifting yeah. of right. improvising. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah which I, I was like, like, oh, I would be so... I can't roll... I cannot GM like that anymore. I've tried to. It's just too much work. So I was like, holy crap, he's doing so much work. He should just let yeah. us, like, you know, take well, some of that off his yeah, plate. Especially but... in a system like this, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, so I, I ignored I ignored the prompt the characters to shape reality for the most part. I did it occasionally, but I yeah. but I didn't plan it either. Like I mean, I had an right. idea mm-hmm. that there might be a derelict station and stuff like that. But after that, it was kind of like more like I let the the moves kind of guide me. And like yep. you know, if you guys had succeeded a lot more, things probably would have gone a lot better. If, yeah, you know, oh, yeah. like yeah. Any, oh, anytime you guys roll a weak hit, which is all the time, yeah. I'm like thinking, okay, what yeah. what can, what what can I throw in as a complication here? And that yeah. that's really funny. I, I like that prompt for a complication, which is yeah. why I like Star Wars. Yeah. But that's that's my hang up when I roll these games because sometimes the instruction to make something up or right. something bad that that's usually not enough for me. Right. But for some reason I process the whole Star Wars data better. Yeah, oh but, for uh, sure. Yeah. But but that's just me. I mean, it, it's it's the same. At the end of the day, the Star Wars dice are telling me the same thing. Make something up and make sure it's bad. Right. But I don't yeah. know. I, I sort of, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's but it's me. so much. I feel like with the Star Wars dice, it's different because the dice result, like it's the same thing in the, in the sense that the Star Wars dice in the book have suggestions for what to threaten. True. What, where in here, it gives you the moves and it gives you suggestions. But like, this game is funny. I've run this game four times. I run Dungeon World once, and I'm much more comfortable with Dungeon World for some reason. It's just, it's weird because this one is so light on yeah. the PBTA part of it yeah. that I'm like, I don't know what to do. It's like, it's, it I freaks me out. When I first, saw this, when I first like, saw this, I thought, this isn't a rule book. This is, uh, yeah. this is one rule, what the dice are going to provide, and then there's some flavor. Yeah. Yeah. See, you see, know, to me, I mean, I, I literally looked at this and said, "Wow." This is this is just me. It's it's like I I found I found like the the the, the bigger lists like the, you know this guy yeah. that asked the question in, in the in the um, uh, G plus thread that I kind of referenced in in, yeah. in, a, in a post. Um, the guy referenced. He said, you know, pretty much to like you know, hey, I um, I find like these GM moves in the list to be restrictive. He goes, I know what to do. Like, I mean, I've been doing this for I've been playing role playing games for a long time. The, the agendas, the um, the the principles, the guiding principles, like you know, like Apocalypse yeah. World tells you how to make something that's going to be like Mad Max. You know, yeah. even even here, the principles tell you, okay, you're going to make something that's going to be like you're going to paint in the broad primary colors. You're going to make space a dangerous place. It's going to be like Firefly. It's going to be like the crew of the Nostromo. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, but what it doesn't do, what Uncharted Worlds doesn't do, is it doesn't give you this list of like, okay, when they fail here. Right. Here, here's a, here's the things to list uh, where something like the veil, which I have to run soon, which I like the veil, but the veil is very like okay when you when they fail this move here's this big list these are exactly, I love this because it's like okay do some creative here. Right. Okay, mm-hmm. I can do that because I've done that for That's a long time. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. sometimes I am like a lawyer and I have to say, I have to think for a second okay what can I put here? Yeah. But, this is this is the old school version yeah. of Pathfinder, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, OSR is the simple pathfinder. So charge, what you just said about the guy who comes, I know, but the charge, it makes restrictive. Bull rush is restricted. The same thing. Yeah. Right. We're talking about rules and things you have to follow versus freedom. Right. This is the 
this is the rules light version of PBTA, right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying, Ivan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's. I mean, I, it's probably. It's no surprise. It's probably why I instantly said, "Oh, I like this one," yeah. because yeah. it's like, "Oh, okay, make a complication, yeah. but I can make crap up." All right, yeah. but like, I don't. But I don't. But what I don't have to do, you know, this is this is the hang up of my mind. So I don't have to look and remember. Okay, well, wait a minute. If they fail right. this. Like, what's what's the right. list of things? It's like, oh no, no, dude. There's a there's a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the complication. Or you know, so mm -hmm. you know, it's just um. So so to me, um. You and know, CGA made a I, great I like point that. today in his Pathfinder video. Mm -hmm. Some, oh, yeah, he did. What, yeah, what, yeah. what is really simpler? Uh, you know, having this defined so we don't have to we don't have to finagle it. Is that simpler or not having any definition at all? And us being able to, I think it depends on the nature of your creativity. Yeah. What is yeah. Now the danger, then the danger is fear. I'm not fear. Uh, 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 being fair. You know, the danger then is, right. is it fair? What you make up, is that fair? Versus what the rule says I'm allowed to do. Yeah. Light what is, 2D20 is, yeah. right? Right. And what is our, what is our good bosun? One important element is uh, intent. If if your intent right. as a player is clear, consequences are, are clear. I, I learned this from playing Burning Wheel, where the intent is everything. Because mm -hmm. uh, like Vitor saying, I want to draw his attention. Bing, mm -hmm. there's your intent. Mm -hmm. So it's, if anything goes wrong, it's related to intent. And Bingo. then it, and you know, I did good... it exactly right. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. same thing when I said I want to sh check the ship, make sure we didn't get any stowaways and we didn't oh, yeah. get yeah. any. It's like, boom. boom. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what's funny you know. about this system and that is that the one big issue that I have with running PBTA is that it's hard to articulate the stakes right so like in in star wars you you start sh you know heading handing over those purple and red dice and the red <laughs> black dice. you know what the stakes are and then you can say oh wow um you know but in this one it, it's sort of like it's difficult to say okay if you do that these are the stakes like sometimes you have to be very explicit and call that out because i know i've yeah. been in a few games and i've seen a few games where I don't even know. I don't think the GM necessarily knows because it's all coming at you so fast, right. right? And so it's trying to resolve the scene so quickly, but you as a player don't necessarily have an idea of the mm -hmm. stakes of the action. And Well, think and, about that. I mean, that know. is a big – think about that. Yeah. This is the only game where the GM doesn't say faulty. There isn't an armor right. class. Right. So in D&D, &D, it's set by AC. It's set yeah, by yeah. DC. It's set by a number on the die six. Yep. In in two uh, D twenty, you set a difficulty. In ubiquity, mm -hmm. you set a difficulty. The GM doesn't play any role in this except call the move, and the complication or the the, the failure. There yeah. is okay. no there is no well you know if you fail this, which is kind of fascinating. That that mechanically is a big difference. Yeah, Star Wars, I mean, you're, you're setting the difficulty. Well, there is though. I mean the 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 moves the the six minus moves or the mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. or the the seven through nine. The problem is that so what I'm referring to as stakes is more like right. when so let's say you get that seven through nine and there's a complication. Right. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, where, where's the probabilities here? Uh, uh, yeah, I was like, okay. there's there's, there's, a, there's there's the probabilities. Well, yeah, right. but, but yeah. My, my point is the DM doesn't doesn't say this is a difficulty two. You just pull right. the dots. Right, right, right. But I guess what I'm saying is as a player... In Star Wars, in... you still put in the purple, you put in the black, sure. you put in the boost. Yep. Right. But although now, the way I do it, and I don't know if, if other people do it, but when I'm doing it in Star Wars, before they roll, I'm already telling them, okay, this is what you're going to do. And so mm -hmm. that then in my... At least I give them an out if, if they don't want to still roll it because now they know the stakes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, And if it was a table game, I would just literally hand the dice over to them. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, you know what? Yeah. But it's you know like... What's, um... Oh, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say, but in this one, I'm like, as a GM, it's hard because it's like, I'm trying to think of what that seven through nine result is going to be, or I'm going to try to think of what that six minus result is. And if I haven't, if I haven't set stakes initially, then I'm like, okay, well, do, do they take is damage? Do I just break yeah, something? It, yeah. You know, and, and, and that, if that, I make the wrong it. stakes, then it can, yeah, mm -hmm. the player can legitimately call foul, you know? But yeah, see, well, no, well, I would suggest I would suggest that's a consciousness change. So yeah. if you set the stakes and the difficulty in Star Wars, all you're doing in this is setting the stakes post roll. Yeah. 
Right. The interest you're just changing when you're setting the stakes. Well, the yeah. The interesting thing is, yeah. is though, too, there's, is uh, you know, in, in that conversation too, some of the people objected to the idea of not using GM moves because then they wouldn't know what the stakes were. But you know, I, I don't know if I understand where they're coming from. But like, there's so many different GM moves that you could pull at the end of it. Oh yeah. And, and I, actually, if you read if you read the granddaddy of this world. Yeah, that game is brutal. Yeah, I mean the stakes are horrific. It's yeah, it's meant to be. Yeah, your your chance, like I've held the thing up, and the and for the most part, your chances of success in PBTA games is very high. Yeah, um, your chances. I mean, well, you, you and and most of what you're going to score is you're going to score weak hits. Right. Overall, mm -hmm. and it's especially like in, you know like in something like Apocalypse World with those ridiculous like you know plus two and plus three yeah. scores. Yeah. There's gonna be there's gonna be characters that always succeed at something, but. Mm -hmm. But the um, the flip side of that, and that's part of that particular genre where he's going for that kind of Mad Max thing. It, it's, oh God, yeah. So, um, the 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 GMOs are brutal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, they, they are the characters might not die, right. but like everything they hold dear will be taken yeah. away from them. Even, even even what they don't hold dear, it's gonna. Yeah. And you know, so depending on like you know, I I believe you could run on charge in a pretty gritty fashion as well. Oh, for you sure. Know, like, I mean. I was being I was being a little nice. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to inflict harm. It's going to be one yeah. wound, but but I could have had horrible things happen if we were going for a real. Yeah, you know, well, and it depends you know. too because those monsters. I mean, typically in this game, you would you would decide what their damage level is, so they might mm -hmm. immediately deal severe damage to you. You know, like like right. I know like a shotgun does like lethal damage or mm -hmm. or critical damage or whatever it's called. Right. Like right off the bat, and then you do your your pat your what do you call it brace for impact or whatever. But uh, right. which yeah, I think right. we forgot to do. But whatever, I don't like that move anyway because it slows down combat. Yeah, but, yeah I was uh, just doing real. I was yeah. doing really fast, like yeah. it slows down combat yeah. so. in a one roll game. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. It does. It's <laughs> it's annoying. Like if you ever have to do the pat, it's it's super annoying in play to do that because right. for me yeah. anyway, it takes me right, right out of the thing. I'm like, right. oh, but yeah. um, but, that's, but yeah. anyhow. We should probably we should probably uh, go to bed because oh, yeah. we're all uh, <laughs> because except for Jason we're all that's right. But um, yeah, like uh, but I, I would I you know to, I have to run a basic fantasy game tomorrow, so I should be on I should be tip top. Uh, you guys you are to blame be. if it's uh, lackluster know, and bad and but yeah, um, <laughs> I would say Sam, go ahead and and keep keep the discussion on the end because I think these discussions are actually pretty valuable to uh, to have on mm. the uh, the yeah. videos afterwards. Yeah, yeah I'll nothing. just um I'll just straight up send you the file. I'll just like uh, give you the link to my Google Drive or whatever, and then you right can on. grab it and yeah, do it do with it what you will. Well, yeah, because we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get like um let's see, it's, look at how good your picture is, man. That with that fancy camera, and the rest of us all look like crap. Now we're gonna have to get <laughs> have to get like five monitors, camera. And, <laughs> no, you just got just get one monitor, <laughs> just get one. That's all you need. Next one to your one. next to your one laptop, one, like, and then you like got Jason. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason's got his TV Jason's and it's like giant television set. Yeah, you, no, you, I, you, I want, you want my uh, nineteen inch monitor? So, no, no. Wait, Jason, are you using a desktop or a laptop? Desktop. I never use lap now. I'm yeah. well into I've, I've been a desktop guy since uh, 1976. Nice. <laughs> yeah, the TRS I'm willing to bet you can plug that monitor in also. I that, can. Oh, yeah. no. I, the, I yeah. can go VGA with this yeah. or HDMI and yeah. then HDMI into this. That's what I would yeah. do. I just. So I'll, I'll probably put it here and then I'll have, yep. I'll have my, my stuff I have to be able to see readily yeah. get to here and then I'll have my yeah. video yeah. stuff here. But yeah, yeah you know. Same. Find yourself a cheap monitor somewhere, plug it into your laptop, then you got two screens, then you can yeah. you know, then you can do things. Yeah. And then and then when your laptop overheats, Ivan, you'll know why. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Alrighty guys. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Hey Ivan, thank Thanks. you. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Fantastic.